Woo. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to the season finale of the USS Nighthawk, where our intrepid crew of intelligence explorers might meet their fiery end or discover some massive uh, plot reveal and then die. Or they might live. We'll find out. Um, no real announcements for me, aside from the fact that we will be taking the next uh, session off, so we will not be here on the 26th. Instead, we will be back on September, or on Thursday, October the 10th, at this time. Um, I believe that the captain has a log. That I do, buddy. That I do. Captain's log, started 82616.4. After the first Typhon Pact mounted an, ex mounted an assault in Deep Space 15, we've been holding station at Cerberus to guard and protect the station from any further incursions. There have not been any further sign of the Thelians, or any Typhon Pact activity within the Lasai Expanse. We've uncovered data cores for the debris of the fallen Tholian vessels. Data analysis and retrieval have uncovered and analyzed gate locations that have their origin in Tholian space. Director Chalmers has kindly requested that Nighthawk back to Station Zero, and we've only just arrived by a QSD tug. I hope to finally start getting answers to the right questions instead of seeking the answers to the wrong ones. End log. As it was stated in the log, you have been picked up by the uh, USS Contiki, a transwarp tug class vessel. Same one that actually brought you out to the Lasai Expanse. Makes you wonder how many of them there actually are in the Federation in total. Anyways, uh, you, so there is a roughly a one-day travel time before you get back to the Alpha Quadrant proper. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly run through folks, see if there's anything that they would like to get done while in transit. Uh, so we will start at the bottom with uh, Lieutenant Erkin. Uh, I will be administering the uh, hollow tests for for Pilot Jefferson. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> um, Finally. Okay. Roll me a presence plus con test with a difficulty of two. Uh, right. And if you have anything like teaching or instructing that w or maybe even intimidation that might work uh how about animal handling uh no no i'm sorry that just doesn't do it in this instance one day i'll make it work one day one day mm -hmm. yes but it is not okay. this day no i just have helm operations and small craft and stuff so nothing no um so you are in the holodeck jefferson is actually if we could just do it this way uh you are on a simulation of the bridge there's Jefferson on the starship. Well, now we're stuck in the holodeck. Uh, apparently this is now a holodeck-themed episode. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. Okay. That's wrong person. So, uh, Jefferson has once again crashed the starship. Uh, you don't seem... He doesn't seem to be uh, responding well to your teachings. I say, okay, let's just do it one more time. Uh, when the Klingons fire their torpedoes at us, you always immediately bank to the left because they do have a tendency to aim right. So you want to try to get past them. But, and then we crash the ship again. It's like, no, you, no, I meant right. Hang on. No, uh, I would get this backwards. If Is that shoot to the starboard, right, turn... sir? Sorry? Is that starboard, sir? Uh, yes, that's what it's called, starboard. <laughs> God, I can't remember my ancient sailing techniques um uh d do better and then i'll relax and back in the chair <laughs> and i'm just going to roll for jefferson because i think it's funny yep uh, let's see control plus con because i don't often get to roll for characters on my own uh ship well he did okay he's learning and he, f it took a few times, but he's finally um, passed the um, Erkin's patented torpedo evasion simulator on normal difficulty. Uh, good. I will, I will ramp it up to harder difficulty, adding an extra Klingon cruiser, uh, and then a, a light asteroid field. Hmm. So now you see those asteroids over there. They've got a mineral in them, uh, and I just pull up a little scan sheet that's got this 
It's got a, a duidium in it that, that helps us be hidden from the Klingon sensors. So you, you always want to try to stay behind cover and turn around and then let them have it at the torpedoes. <clears throat> he does okay swinging through the asteroids and then it comes time to weapons lock. And then the shot goes wide, torpedoes lock on, and, well, uh, the ship suffers several breaches, and let's say that uh, Lieutenant Commander Liam Helsing is now dead. Sorry, Lieutenant Helsing, it was fun knowing you. Can I do a really cool death scene? Absolutely. <laughs> Thud. Uh, of course, that's spinning around a couple times, tripping over the chairs, and then going over the rail. Doggy starts crying and like all, all weepy. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, well, um, you're starting to map. To, you're getting the fundamentals. So if you have any more questions, just let me know. Otherwise, we'll we'll pick it up where we left off after we leave the slipstream. Yes, sir. Uh, but but some remarkable improvements, Ensign. I'm very pleased. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, next up is... Oh, I see that Lieutenant Commander Thashrad has joined us. How are you doing, man? Good. Uh, I wasn't paying attention when you joined, so you're currently just in slipstream, not under your own power, making your way back to headquarters. Is there anything you wish to do during this day's worth of downtime? I think it's time to uh, finally call a team meeting for the entire engineering group. Okay. <clears throat> Where would you like this team meeting to be held? In engineering? Uh, yeah, make, probably makes sense. Okay. We are in engineering. Can the, uh, can the captain mosey on in to this meeting here? Or would you want it to be exclusively engineering personnel? You can mosey on in if you want to um, observe. I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping it a relatively casual one. Just kind of get their, their feedback and thoughts on how things all right, then. Well, okay. in that case, I'll return to my duties. Oh, and I just got your token ready and everything. Okay, so um, anyone else from engineering? Do we count uh, Avon Zell as part of engineering? As part of yes, the, I do. guess, this transporter crew. Well, she's technically an operations officer, so yeah, she falls under there. And I believe that's uh, that's everyone that actually has a token. So I'm assuming there's a lot of NPCs around and background characters, but these are the ones that really matter. Yeah. What would you like to say? Let's so gather them all up and uh, all right, crew. So uh, we've been together for for a little bit of time now. Been through a few harrowing experiences here and there. Had a bunch of excitement. Um, perhaps a few few close calls. Uh, I'm not sure how everyone feels, but you know, um, I I think you've kind of all gotten a sense of my character by by now. You know me. I, I love I love the excitement. I love the um, Last minute's uh, ingenuity and, and all. but really considering all that we, we've gone through, I wanted to get a sense of uh, sense of the room. How are you guys feeling? Any any feedback for me? Anything you guys particularly need? You know, just want to get uh, level set before you know the the next imminent uh, adventure hits us. Uh, Lieutenant Cassatt is the first to speak, as Vulcans typically are when given permission to do so. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, I find your casual disregard for most of the safety. Uh, specifications on this ship to be kind of rather foolhardy and it often falls to me to put out small fires sometimes literally after your repairs i kind of nod all right fair enough so i guess i should explain my viewpoint on this because a lot of times the the things i i typically focus on are more of the immediate problems you know when we're at the uh in imminent danger of the entire ship uh failure i tend to focus on the more critical things at the but i admit i sometimes uh can miss a few um small things here and there so i appreciate you uh stepping in and perhaps spending a bit more time on some of the more uh i guess perhaps more mundane tasks that i i typically perhaps my overlook in my um, overzealousness. That being said, I will in endeavor to try to um, perhaps pay more attention to a few of these things, but I can't make um, absolute promise saying that I'll, I won't, um, you know, 
attack the most uh, critical problems first. So I will entrust you to uh, keep me on track when uh, when when these things get. Of course, sir. Chief Zell sort of leans back on one of the consoles. Well, sir, I'm very pleased with how ef how efficient the ship has been running power-wise. Transporters have not gone down once, and that's a key point of failure in most starships during combat. Or, um, sensitive times. So I appreciate that. Glad to hear it, uh, Chief Zell. Well, uh, I, I hope we'll continue to... Uh... To keep that record because i'm sure soon enough we will find ourselves um urgently needing the transporter in an urgent capacity um whether it be now or a few missions from now fault ranny just looks around and says i don't actually think i've left my bridge post since we left uh station zero the first time sir uh kind of the first time being down here it's kind of spacious i like it oh are you saying you, you'd, you'd want more time down here uh, she she shrugs and says, I have a few things I'd like to work on when I'm not on duty. Hmm. All right, I'll make a mental note of that. But maybe, maybe if uh, people are interested in, in learning new things, we, we'll work in um, perhaps a little shift rotation here and there. People can uh, learn a bit more about the other parts. I'd appreciate that, sir. Any Anyone else? Mm. One of the no-names uh, puts their hand up and says, Am I allowed to drink coffee while on duty? Absolutely. I I I've already drank eight. I've already drank eight. They, there's a bunch of uh, happy murmurings around as they uh, come to th as they understand this new change in policy. Having liquid around exposed cables probably a good thing. Can't hurt. Oh right? yeah. What's what's the worst that could happen? It's fine. It just inspires a. Uh, uh, brilliance and uh, you know sometimes, you, sometimes that brilliance has a small cost i'm sure lieutenant kasat will, will figure it out <laughs> but if uh there's no other um no other feedback for me then uh why don't we get to the main event the pinya there's some unnerved wait what what's this about a pinata you see, I've, I've uh, recently been delving into um some more cultural artifacts and i've heard of this this wonderful um gift uh gift explosion called the, the pinata you see, and the scene can kind of fade away as i, I start uh, explicitly um and exuberantly explaining what a pinata, pinata is why I, I go and uh, tie one to the ceiling uh lieutenant cassatt's hopes get raised at the mention of explosion and then realizes that it's probably just candy and uh, lieutenant commander helsing is there anything that you'd like to do um i'd like to go to the uh, what Tin Ford and get a drink from Worth or I haven't been in there in a while. All right, we shall cut to the bar. Let's see. All right, um, as it is, um, as the ship is pretty much doing nothing at the moment, the bar itself is pretty full. Um, lots of folks just trying to keep back uh, trying to socialize on well just trying to figure out what's going on um there is several small bets being played placed on why you're actually going home some folks are hoping that it's about time that you guys give the tyranids what for or not tyranids that's 40k the tholians what for in retaliation for what they've done to starfleet in the last couple weeks last month or so so that's the general air that you're getting as you walk in. Wooler sees you behind the bar and immediately raises a glass of what you already know to be one of your favorite drinks. I walk on up to the belly on up to the bar. And what can I do for the chief of security of this fine vessel? I'll have exactly one of those. It has been far too long and I've wrapped up that project I've been working on for the captain. Oh, fantastic. Um, might I ask what that project might be? Hmm? Classified. He smiles. You know I have the same clearance level as you. True, but it's always 
clearance level and need to know. But mm. just because I can know doesn't mean I should. He smiles yeah, exactly. and goes back to cleaning a fairly long twisted glass that's often used for uh, more chemically unstable drinks. But I do got a question to ask you, Werther. Uh, he stops and pivots kind of clumsily, as someone with three legs does. His uh, his elongated neck makes eye contact before the rest of his body catches up. <laughs> and what is that? I, I gotta ask you, since you're about the best person who sees everybody here and you know everything going on, I think I have a tell. He raises an eyebrow. Oh. Somehow the captain seems to know what I'm what's going on before I'm even quite aware of where it is. I know he's he's half uh Trill and Beta Zed, he's got some of that empathic power, that's never a, an even battlefield, but I think I gotta tell. Uh, Wooler looks looks you up and down and just says, it's the eyes, of course. The windows to the soul. He snickers a little bit in his Edosian uh, voice. Yeah, you might wear good body armor. You might have some of the best weapons available to Star that Starfleet can make you, legally, anyways. Maybe even illegally. He winks. But... Let's face it, you can't def you cannot defend or ah, you, the universe can throw whatever it wants at you, and yeah, it just can't hurt the heart. Yeah, it's kind of what I I thought my mo the emotions that I have kind of made me better at what I do. You know, it sets my resolve. You know, makes me the protector that I am. You know. Oh, I'm, I didn't say it was a bad thing. Mr. Helsing, just saying it's your tell. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So the the eyes. I think I gotta look at regulations, see if sunglasses I can wear in uniform on the ship. He smirks and says, "I've seen some. I've seen some people wear those visor things, even while they have good eyesight. Apparently, it helps them get my." Uh, pumps more information straight into their brain. If you ask me, it'll fry that quicker than some uh, Klingon scrambled eggs, but, well. They wear them while they still have good eyesight. Interesting. Put a little heads-up display in there. Yeah, might, I don't know. I'll put that in the back on the, in the memory banks and think on that one later for a little bit. Potential. Yep. Finish up the drink. Thank you very much. You give me a good bit to think on, and then I'm going to have something else to come up with. Take care. Anytime, Lieutenant Commander. Place is always open because, well, there's no locking mechanisms on the doors. <laughs> uh, and with that, we'll see if, uh, if there's anything that Chief or CMO Coox would like to do. Um, yeah, um, in Medical Bay. Okie dokie, in um, Sick Bay. Um, oh, she's still here. Not anymore. Okay. So, um, the last time the captain came in here, uh, Sangral, um, I don't think the captain would be down here nope. at the moment. Probably not. We're just <clears throat> doing scene shift stuff, but feel free to start. <clears throat> okay, so, um, I'll tell you what, I will be. Oh, okay. Please. Uh, or or uh, I figured have you're, a, I figured you're leading into what we were talking about the other night on. Yes, yes. I'm just stumbling so, my way through it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so I, I would like to uh, call t for uh, Bashir mm -hmm. um, to join me if he wouldn't mind joining me in the sick bay. <clears throat> with um, we have an interesting compound that I would love to have your uh, scientific aptitude. Uh, in working on uh, this mysterious substance was left here and I don't know what it is and I would love your assistance in the matter please join me in sickbay 
I'll head into sick bay. All right. <laughs> okay, and so uh, I probably have um, Ira Zen getting every the samples all set up for me. Um, do we know what casing the uh, the substance was put into? Um, yeah. So the the samples were collected by um, glass vials. It was okay, originally vials. distributed via aerosol, but naturally there's no propellant left, just aerosol. So, or just the compound itself. So the glass vials with several various labels of biohazard, not to be ingested, inhaled, applied dermally, subdermally, or even looked at without proper permission. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead. Um, I'll invite uh, Bashir over. <clears throat> so uh, we have this unknown substance. Um, apparently from the, uh, the previous CMO's uh, notes on the matter, they're quite detailed. Vulcans are very thorough. Um, but I would like to do some testing on this, and I'll bring it over to our little uh, scanner stations that's usually in the medical bay, you know, with where they always do their uh, uh, <laughs> their medical jargon of figuring out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the vials. Um, computer erect a level one force field around the equipment area, and then we'll I'll place the vial in there and the uh, shield that up. Okay. Um, I'll actually yeah, halt off. I was like, computer. Level five, please. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, <laughs> excellent decision here. I, I can see that uh, there, there must be much more caution. My, my apologies for not taking the correct uh, levels. <laughs> um, okay, so then um, I read in the notes that it was uh, Ira Zinn that actually helped uh, work on this substance as well. Correct. And I'll look over to him. He nods. Uh, like, well, uh, there's Zin not many of us around, sir. So we help how we can. Of course, of course. Uh, I appreciate all your your you were uh, commended in the uh, the notes on this substance. Um, and basically, um, I'd like him to come over and you know kind of look over what we're doing, uh, and and lock out anything that you know he has already tested on, because um, we've already you know we have a counter uh, counter agent. And uh, we, basically, what I'm looking to do is, with the help of our science uh, commander and Zin, I would like to create a antibody that okay. we can that we can administer to most of the crew. So, if it does happen again, if if a, something of this substance gets out, um, that it will be extremely short term. Maybe it'll uh, lower the lifespan of it. Um, okay. And that's what we're looking to do. So something similar to a vaccine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so what you're... Uh, roll me a... Reason plus medicine. Uh, okay. This will just be a difficulty of one because um, there's been several extensive notes written by the previous CMO, uh, Lieutenant Cassatt. Okay, reason, medicine... And the commander or Ensign Ira could assist if they wish. Okay. Would virology or xenobiology come into focus? Uh, virology, most likely. Okay. Hey, there's two. All right. I'm nice. assisting. So okay. I have actually a virus. Ooh. Okay. That's uh, one. Then, yeah, that works fine. Who's tracking our momentum tonight? I can. All right. Or can can. can Please can, do. Thank you. Can. Just one of these days, I want someone to not volunteer so I can order them to crack momentum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, and there—that's a critical success. So that Ooh. is uh, three momentum total. Nice. Science. <laughs> well, that's why I brought you in here because I knew you'd do amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you have succeeded quite well. The um, uh, the yeah, an antibody is created and can be pumped through the uh, life support system at a moment's notice if necessary. Okay, and so we can make a uh, dispersible system that perhaps if that is like there's a threat again, we'll be able to just turn it on. And um, will it have the full effect of negating, or are we gonna just? Is it just? Do I think it's going to just do uh, lower the symptoms a little bit? 
uh, should do a pretty good job of negating entirely. Assuming, of course, they use the same uh, virology compound. But yeah. Fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll uh, turn around and arc success and to the commander and Zin at the, at the same awkward time. I'm going to cross my hands and shake both their hands at the same time. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your excellent work. Oh, uh, right. And one hand at a time. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think we uh, we nailed this. This won't be a problem again. And then um, I'll uh, uh, and uh, Zen, would you go ahead and synthesize um, a bunch of these uh, for quick, ready response that we can go ahead and get these started? He nods and in uh, because he's full beta Z, he get the response in tele telepathy right away, sir. Oh, excellent. And um, and then and that that'll be it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bashir. I, I appreciate your uh, skillful use there. Uh, Bashir. Okay. Uh, Bashir just smiles that... and says, "Thank you." And <laughs> thank you. Oh, are you there, man? trying to reset okay uh then we'll come back to you shortly and we'll see if captain singral has anything that he'd like to do um i'd say i prior to this since i would have been finishing up my letter to the director of starfleet intelligence mm -hmm. um i gotta go to the head cheese himself but that's something that we can discuss if necessary once we actually arrive on station zero other than that, though, um, I'd say I'd find myself on um, another holodeck. Okay. Um, separate from the one where Lieutenant Erkin and uh, Jefferson had their flight simulations. Okay. And I'm actually going to be running. Uh, I'm actually going to be running uh, variable simulations and battle strategies for the defense of the Lissai Expanse, and also probably mm -hmm. uh, simulations in order to actually defend this ship. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so, basically what's going to happen, um, actually, this would be a good time to introduce a supporting character that I had made. Uh, introducing your new actual intelligence officer of Calix Zale. And apparently, her token didn't make right. Say la vie. We'll figure this out eventually. Mm -hmm. Uh, Calix Zale is a Bajoran and has transferred on as your dedicated intelligence officer. Uh, it's her job to primarily advise everyone when things are going to go south before they do. Or precise, or possibly just advise when things might go south. Ah, so um, she's running through all the simulations with you. Captain, there's just far too many unknowns yet with the Lasai Expanse. We have only encountered three, or we've only encountered directly two species, and have gained insight that there might be another three or four. Um, we should look into defending the station from exterior, from these any. Ah, we should investigate threats, or we should do our best to find any other sapient species out here, and then perform a more thorough investigation. I don't disagree, Zale, but as you already know, as you've reviewed our records, the the only, like you said, the only species that we've truly actually encountered and have any leeway with is the Vitaris Imperium. What I'm concerned about is not only what you mentioned, but the possibility that there are other Lasai Expanse species that may catch wind of exactly what's happening here. If the, or if the, if the possibility exists, that they are working with Tholians or anybody else in the Typhon Pact. I'm here to look for patterns, however unlikely they may be. Don't get me wrong, we can only do the best with what we know. And I hope our arrival at Station Zero is actually going to give us more answers to the right questions than otherwise. But until that time comes, and until you and I both know more, this is what we do, and we got to prepare with the best with what we've got. Run it again, please. Of course, sir. In this simulation, I am... Uh, the variables are that uh, I have raised the hostility levels of the Vitaris by 50%. Given what numbers we've seen, uh, we would be overwhelmed within mere minutes should they, should we encounter even a small fleet of theirs. Despite the fact that their uh, starships have shown to be far less durable than our own, 
their weapons are still very potent. All right. This time, modify the next simulation to if they have the pot if they have the possibility of a, emerging from the Borg transport hub. Ag calculate our odds at, of a counterattack and exactly how quickly we would be able to mobilize. Of course, sir. Assuming full uh, communication relays are still in place from Cerberus, or sorry, Deep Space 15. That's the official term, and I will use it for as much as I can. The assuming an emergence event of any sort from uh, Cerberus Station, if they were to call us, uh, even from the furthest point of the Lasai Expanse, and she taps part of her screen, showing it would it would take us as a as a single entity, it would take us roughly one week at full warp. Uh, chances would increase further if we could get, um, if we could persuade Starfleet to dispatch further uh, fleet assets under our com under our command. However, sir, the de however, sir, one should not um, rule out the durability of the station itself. We saw how. Uh, how much firepower the Tholians brought to it, and it barely dropped their shields. Actually, sir, uh, Lieutenant Erkin did more damage to the stru to the uh, structure of that station inadvertently than the Tholians tried to do on purpose. Well, I'll actually turn to Zael, and I'll just say, well, let's make one thing straight. <laughs> that may be true. And although it's definitely there in the official records, and we have to acknowledge exactly that, unfortunately, some things happen in a chaotic battle like that where rash decisions and quick decisions actually have to be made. It's unfortunate, but I stand by his decision. And you make sure to stand by the rest of this, this crew, too. I am I am simply stating the facts, sir. I, In all honesty, that was probably the necessary call at the time. As you should. I'm wondering exactly before we run our last simulation of the day, um, maybe we should actually coordinate with the information that Cerberus has given to us, but an emergency, is we should calculate the odds of an emergency escape through the transwarp hub of civilian personnel. I don't exactly know uh, if they've mapped it anymore in the meantime since we've been there, but there were no operations or cycles that were conducted since we were there over the past week. But in general, we should calculate the likelihood of a civilian fleet surviving if they were to abandon the station. Of course, sir. And she begins tapping away. Uh, she doesn't like the numbers. She taps again. Uh, sir, best case scenario, if we, if this, if Deep Space 15 was completely destroyed, assuming 100% uh, civilian and Starfleet personnel evacuation was successful, there is very little, uh, and assuming that there are no hostile presence left, uh, survival is roughly 50%. What, what I would suggest, sir, is that we find an al a proper ally within the Lasai Expanse. One that could be called upon to assist as necessary. Or, My think <laughs> or just bring out a larger fleet, sir. My thinking's exactly... And for the rest of that, that's up to Starfleet. But do you recognize a pattern in here? I do, Do you sir. recognize a pattern that you might... All right, well, by all means, please tell me. I see a pattern of optimism and negligence, walking hand in hand. Well, I must... I could have to agree with you with, with optimism, but where do you see the negligence? Well, sir, we have... Um, we have a transwarp hub, which is former Borg technology that in itself has been deemed a risk, a substantial risk by Starfleet as on its own, which has at minimum 1,603 possible exits to anywhere in the Milky Way galaxy, and hopefully not beyond, because we just don't know how far the Borg went before they all went away. There is a significant amount of unknowns that is that we do not have enough information to properly defend against. All of that is well and good. And I would agree with you on most points. But well, something that I will add, at least in terms of your, t if your topic of negligence, is that what I see is that we are actually, the, 
the biggest danger to ourselves. And I'm sure you're probably going to roll your eyes thinking of uh, Lieutenant Erkin here, but I mean that sincerely. Not just the, not just because of the defense of the Expanse, not just because of the the might of this or the lack thereof of this fleet, and not necessarily just because of this location. If, during the uh, during the first incursion, the only thing that that proved to me is that the rest of the Expanse needs a major overhaul, and that is what I intend to do, and that is what I intend to accomplish. Every other goal is secondary. Those are, that's an, that is a lofty ambition, sir, taking an entire sector of space that has not been even close to properly explored yet and attempting to s subvert it to your grand designs. Ambitious, though. Well, I guess it's time for us to get started. Agreed, sir. If there's well, anything that... else... Oh. Sorry, I cut you off. No, I was going to say that basically concludes everything I wanted to take care of. Likewise, sir. I will see you, I will see you shortly. And she, uh, without further ado, she will turn on her heels and walk out the room. And uh, because he had a little bit of microphone issues beforehand, uh, Captain or Commander Bashir, is there anything that you would like to do? No, the doctor thing was my big wanted to help him get that figured out so okay so we are going so you guys received the five minute warning that you're about to drop out of quantum slipstream and you do so without any further um problems whatsoever you are then brought to the zero station which has gotten far more uh activity than it had in the past when you last left it there is several different starships all either in close proximity to or in the process of docking with the uh, station itself. Um, most notably, um, there is a, a second Scryer class, which your, uh, station, which your automated sensors immediately tell you is the USS Scryer. Um, there are uh, several Phantom uh, class um, stealth insertion vehicles roughly the size of a defiant class or sao paulo class known um that are darting in and out running ferries or running ferry duties or just uh act running a defensive screen and the two larger ships um both of the both of which are scale ship or scale six is the eclipse class the uss silent vigil and this is the first you guys may have heard of an Eclipse class in your briefings, but this is the first time you've ever seen one in person. Starfleet Intelligence is not one to talk about or even showcase how many ships it has in its little intelligence fleet. Uh, the other ship is one that is actually of some notoriety, uh, the USS Archangel. Um, it is the uh, battleship, <clears throat> and your automatic sensors and data lab is quickly going to pull this up. It is actually the uh, command cruiser for the 4th Fleet under um, Admiral Yamato. What it's doing here is yet to be fully determined. As soon as the uh, USS Contiki drops you out of warp, uh, the captain just gives you a quick casual salute, signs off, turns around and warps out of there. Um, while muttering something about getting too close to these intelligence people, you'll just start seeing conspiracies everywhere. Oh, I think to myself that he's not wrong. And pretty quick, you are hailed from the station. From station, this is docking control calling USS Nighthawk. Well, this is Nighthawk here. Go ahead. Welcome home, Captain. We look forward to seeing you and your crew again in person. Please enter through dock through docking port four, and as soon as you are on board, your presence has been requested in briefing room seven. Please bring uh, your you and Commander Bashir are mandatory. Our presence is mandatory. The others may attend if they wish. Understood. I'll get my crew together and proceed immediately. 
Okay, um, so who else wishes to attend the briefing room? Raise his hand. Okay. Likewise. Yeah, Shras would be interested. Okay, the Shran. Uh, Mr. Koax? Uh, sure, that sounds good. Okay. If I'm invited, I'll definitely go. Whole team, cool. So what we have is... So Station Zero is far, a far more um, busy place than you have. Oh, that is not where you guys are supposed to be. Uh, Station Zero is a far more uh, crowded place than it has been in the past. Well, the last time you were here anyways. Um, people are running about. There is a heightened tension in the air as you are met by an aide on the main transporter deck. And without so much more as a hello, could you please follow me? Uh, he escorts you through the uh, dimly lit station interior, passing by all sorts of crews. Um, Commander Helsing would notice uh, several uh, groups of security or um, armed forces drilling in uh, boarding and repelling procedures. Um, the Shran, you recognize the uh, you recognize how um, several of the uh, stations. Um, critical systems have been uh, locked down, uh, usually through physical means. So panels that could be easily opened are now um, uh, bio-locked, pad-locked, or other locked as necessary. Um, and aside from that, we are going to drop ourselves into the briefing room. So you guys are the last to arrive as is you guys have probably traveled the furthest. Uh, there is a several familiar faces. Well, okay, two familiar faces in this audience. Director Chalmers is standing in the back corner just with a very impatient expression on his face. Um, he's been waiting to go for some time, apparently. Um, some of you may recognize from his um, um, personnel record, um, Admiral Yamato of the uh, USS Archangel. He's taking a sort of a disinterested um, approach to this whole thing, uh, leaning back in his chair with uh, two feet on the desk. Um, the other person that you would recognize would be Ad, um, Admiral Riker, who is standing up at the podium and waiting for folks to get in. Uh, there are other, uh, there's several other individuals wearing uh, Starfleet uh, intelligence uniforms. Uh, however, despite the fact that I have them listed, um, you, I don't believe, have actually had the pl the pleasure of meeting many of them yet. Uh, Captain Singral and Commander Bashir are led to chairs that are actually uh, uh, closer to the podium. The rest of you are politely um, escorted to the rear of the room with the other. Uh, the other senior staffs that have decided to attend. I will very politely and quietly fanboy over Admiral Riker. Oh, very well. <laughs> oh my gosh, Admiral Riker! <gasps> I, like I was going to ask if there's an autograph session later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Director Chalmers, um, or Captain Singral, as soon as you sit down, the individual beside you um, just quickly spins in his seat and says, uh, extends a hand and says, I'm Captain Rahal, USS Scryer. It's a pleasure to finally meet another ca uh, Scryer captain. Likewise. I mean, it's hard being the only one out there. I mean, considering where they always put us. Agreed. They, ha do you, they had us out in the Delta Quadrant, if you can believe it. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> That's quite a few bit of ways, and here I thought that the expanse was, was, was a journey, but I mean Delta Quadrant. Yeah. What'd you find there? I found out that Admiral Janeway really doesn't like Starfleet intelligence operating in her backyard. Well, that's not big of a, that's not much of a surprise to anybody else here. I mean, you should have known that going in. That is true. That is true. But still, that's, you know, adventurous admirals star going where no man or woman has gone before, Starfleet intelligence falling behind them secretly trying to put out any fires they may start. 
we're just here to do our job so they can do theirs better. Agreed. And at that point, um, Director Chalmers says, right, that's enough chit-chat. Ladies, gentlemen, any uh, intergender species, I apologize for bringing you all here. Actually, I don't apologize because I'm the director and I ordered you to be here. So thank you for coming in such short notice. As you may know, uh, roughly three and a half weeks ago, Starbase 212 was destroyed by the Tholians. And he pulls up a debris-ridden picture of what was once a starbase. We're lucky. Luckily, we got the bastards, too. No one made it out alive. Not us, not them. Guess they had nowhere to go. Maybe that was a suicide run. I don't know. Anyone who can actually tell me how those crystalline things think deserves a medal in xenopsychology. Can you give medals in xenopsychology? Not the point. Anyways, we're going to strike back at the bastards. Because not only did they do this, they also had the audacity to attack another Starbase installation. Deep Space 15. And he'll pull up a picture of the... Uh, he'll pull up a picture of the Tholian assault on Deep Space 15. Crossplug, watch the, Sur watch the Star Trek Adventure Cerberus episode. That's pretty fun. Anyways. <clears throat> they Somehow they have access to the Borg Transwarp hub that they've been exploring out there. And I want to tell them that this is not what's going to happen. We're not going to take this sort of assault li lying down. Whatever the brass or the politicians think, we're going to strike them back, and we're going to do it with as little oversight as possible. This is, a, this is one of those things where Starfleet Intelligence will seek forgiveness rather than permission. And he'll gesture to uh, the now familiar face of Admiral Riker. Admiral, this is your mission. Give the briefing. And at this point, um, I'm going to make a handout available to players. Um, because this is what's going to show up on screen. <clears throat> Admiral Riker will step forward. Clear his, clear his throat, and bring up a map that most of you would recognize as the borders of Federation space and Tholian space. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Admiral Thomas Riker, and it is my pleasure to, br to tell you how we're going to be sh beating these Tholians at their own game. Uh, he briefly thinks for a second. Oh, yes, yes. No, no. Will Riker, he's my brother. And without a second thought, he turns back to it. You'll see here there are four. Uh, Starfleet Intelligence, with some significant thanks to uh, Captain Singral and the USS Nighthawk, we've identified where four uh, gates of the. Where, where four gates of the. Ah, I'm sorry. Where four gates of the Transwarp Hub exit into Tholian space. We're going to take them all out. We're going to tell these Tholians that they are not permitted to use these gates. We're going to destroy their facilities and then salt the earth afterwards so that they can't rebuild them. So, you you may see there are four gates, and he brings them up as indicated in the handout. Gate Alpha is going to be struck, ob obviously, by Admiral Yamato. He will take elements of the 4th Fleet in, cross their borders blatantly, destroy them, eradicating whatever resistance they may pose. This serves two purposes. One, it erases, it erases Gate Alpha. And he seems oddly pleased that he made that his first point. Secondly, it's going to divert attention, I hope. Tholians are very um, procedurally minded. If there is a disturbance in their web, then they will all respond. Secondly, once, shortly after that happens, the USS Silent Vigil, my ship, will take two Phantom-class vessels and go after Gate Beta. If uh, Admiral Yamato's fleet isn't enough to, t to shake them, us going after Gate Beta will. Here's where things get tricky. As you can see, 
Gate Gamma, Gate Delta, not so easy to hit. They are several light years in. Several sectors in, actually. That would take us a good week at, at sustained warp to get to. Thankfully, we have quantum slipstream drive. They don't. Captain Rahal, the scryer, uh, the USS Scryer, and we'll take two, uh, two Phantom class vessels through qu with Quantum Tug to go after Gate Gamma. Of course, Captain Singral, U USS Nighthawk, you're going after Gate Delta. You, there will be two. You will have the accompaniment of Commander Trull, and he points at the large turtle uh, creature and Commander Tai on uh, their vessels. Naturally, you have superiority, or you have seniority. Downside is, and he looks at Rahal and Singral, this is the bad news. We're not, we can't guarantee you a way out. We can drop you off with the tugs, we can't pick you up. Well, we can't, we have no guarantees that we'll pick you up. Whatever fleet elements remain are most likely going to be guarding those gates. The, they need to be destroyed, and the second you blow them up, well, you, I, you have two, eh, you have two options. You can turn tail and run, hope you can make it back to the tug's rendezvous point, or you can get in the gate and, as it collapses, and ride that shockwave, and end up, hopefully, and he'll pull up a, uh, so he'll pull up a path. Hopefully back to Deep Space 15 in the hub. It's going to be a hell of a bumpy ride, though. Questions? So, have we... Oh, Singral will obviously raise his hand be the first to speak. Mm -hmm. Have we actually determined the ex exit points of where these gates actually are? So if I do need to make a quick escape and with the rest of these ships here, how are we certain that we're going to end up back in the Alpha Quadrant? You're, uh, Captain Singral, you in person, you're taking the gate out that the Tholians used to launch their attack on Deep Space 15. I see. The others, the other gateways have been identified through use of some, uh, uh, turned assets and have been verified through other means we're not after the snafu of what happened that led to the misdirection and further attack on deep space 15 starfleet intelligence is being a little more cautious with how it treats its intelligence i'd also like to remind uh every intelligence captain in here that we do have evidence that the Typhon Pact has the ability to look through your quote-unquote ca electronic countermeasures. Yes. Riker does nod, and he just nods back to Chalmers. Chalmers frowns a bit. Yes, we read that part of your report and have, uh, set de and have sent it to the fleet. Um, at, at this point, you're... Uh, tactical officers and engineers should be receiving a new algorithm, which should hopefully give us that advantage back. However, that's the nature of um, intelligence and or infiltration and counter infiltration is sometimes they get you, but it's worth it if you can get them in. It's worth them. It's worth it if you have the chance to get them first. Well, I still have a few more questions. Uh... And I say that kind of sluggishly. If anybody else wants to throw their hand in, otherwise, then you're all just going to keep speaking. I understand why it's important. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to raise my hand. Do we have a weakness on these portals? Like, is there some sort of exhaust port or something such as that? Ah, uh, Admiral Riker. Uh, uh, Director Chalmers is about to speak before Admiral Riker decides to interject first. Quite frankly, we don't know what we're dealing with. The These gates were large enough to allow a Tarantula-class dreadnought through, which means that they're larger than, our, than the gateways that we've been deploying through Deep Space 15. 
most likely they will be heavily armored and when you might have to do some thinking on your feet however and he pauses slightly theatrically we are giving you some toys to play with in the form of tricobalt explosives and these do the uh, sorry i'm i'm gonna immediately cut him off do they have a detonator do they have like an actual fuse and timed sequence captain these things can be timed they can be blown up through uh ca through uh, automatic countdown they can be blown up by remote signal you pr you we're not giving you substandard stuff here I understand that. I'm just saying I remember my Delta Quadrant history, so I want to make sure something similar doesn't happen again. Oh, we learned, we've learned. we learned about it too. Captain Janeway has proven many ways how things could possibly go wrong. And it's our job, of course, to make sure that they don't. So rest assured, Captain, these things have been produced and thoroughly tested. They will blow up how they will blow up how you want them to when you want them to. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please continue. Uh, and he looks back at Bashir. Sorry, um, Commander Thishraler, was it? You answered my question. Well, I understand why this mission has changed from you know, asset retrieval to asset denial, but I am kind of wondering why we just don't have the ability to co-opt the gate. From my understanding, uh, we have a number of former Borgs in Starfleet, most notably Annika Hansen, and I'm pretty sure she's still with the Daystrom Institute. Would taking control of these gates, or at least preventing solely in use, be out of the question? The uh, Director Chalmers, we've run the numbers, and especially your gate, Gate Delta, is impossible to hold deep that deep within Tholian space. We'd have to divert an entire fleet to ensure that the Tholians never use it theirs again. It's just not feasible, Captain. So, and quite frankly, there's a political statement to be made here, too. By blowing up these gateways, we're sending a clear message to the Typhon Pact that any attempt to assault Starfleet assets will be met in with kind. After that, Politics. after that, of course, we fall back to brinksmanship, which is why Admiral Yamato is here. With all due respect, it's my understanding that politics are a game for the Federation Council. While I understand it may necessarily be impossible to have our fleet deployments to protect the gates. I'm still just not wondering if there's any type of electronic sabotage that we could do just simply to prevent their use. I, I understand blowing them up makes a statement, but keeping them intact and actually using that as a potential incursion, whether it be for intelligence routes or otherwise into Thelian space, seems like a much larger boon. He smirks a bit as he's starting to realize what, you are, what you're asking. You want to turn a you want to turn a sword against its owner at the right possible time. I do indeed. I understand that. I have to imagine, even though I have been out there in the expanse, that there has to be some more work that has been done and study on the actual other locations of these gates. There has to be something that we could deem whether or not, whether or not it's a simple activation point. I mean, this was Borg technology after all. There has to be some sort of sequence that if it's no longer there, that we might be able to actually assign to it. I just feel like blowing up these gates, while important, is probably not necessarily something that we need to do, at least not at this time. I still prefer, if possible, acid denial. We believe that to be... F we still believe that to be far too risky, Captain. We prefer the detonation and salting of the, of the Earth. Any asset that could be, or anything that could be left in place after any sort of infiltration or uh, any sort of infiltration or assault has the possibility of being found out and uh, reversed. This is not something that I wish to 
that that is not a chance I wish to take. Besides, I've yet to meet anyone that isn't a Tholian who can tell me who actually how Tholian computers work. And even then, quite and even then, it's very difficult to replicate it with Federation uh, technology. Sir, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, quick question for you. Yes, you in the back. What, instead of flying all the way through Tholian space to gate Delta, since we know over by service station where that gate comes out, can we just go in the back door, drop the bomb and come back out, or then fly on out before we detonate? Admiral Riker just sort of sidelines, uh, or side eyes Director Chalmers and just says, Director, you owe me 20 bucks. And he looks at Helsing and says, that's a damn fine, that's a damn fine idea there you got, uh, Lieutenant Commander. If that, if that can be done, if you think you can, if you have the, uh, if you believe that you are f capable of deploying at ground zero with yourself and the phantoms, dropping a, dropping your uh, charges and laying out, laying out before the Tholian fleet reacts to your uh, appearance, go for it. That's your captain's decision. End of the day, mission objective states that this gate needs to be destroyed. If you can figure out how to do it another way, go for it. Thank you very much. So tangential question, even though it's not directly related to the actions that we're going to be undertaking within the next 24 hours, but what exactly is being done with the remote starbase initiative? I say yeah. that intentionally, mm -hmm. not be I'm out of character. I'm not saying that to rile up because I'm trying to push for something. Mm -hmm. I mostly want to gauge uh, Riker's reaction since okay. it's his that's a, because it's his brother that's in charge of all of that. Yeah. Um, roll me a presence or roll me an insight plus con test for reading empathy. Uh, difficulty of two. Uh, actually, difficulty three, because he is intelligence trained. Insight plus con? Insight plus con. Gotcha. Which I think is what you, people typically use for telepathy stuff. It's kind of all over the map, really. I'm going to say that probably the majority of my focus is apply here. All right. Investigation or undercover or pattern recognition, just to kind of read the man. Yep. Well, that's two degrees of success. Um, I could let that succeed at cost and bank the threat, because you know I like threat. <laughs> uh... I'll let you have some fun. Go bank this threat. Okay. Um, you get at first a, a pang of rivalry from him, uh, which soon uh, turns into a bit of mirth and uh, what's maybe anticipation, I think, is the best phrase for it. Uh, you get the sense that there is definitely something not quite um, family between the two of them. But what it is, you're not able to tell for sure. Um, as for your question, uh, he answers with a little bit of mirth on his lips. Uh, Captain Rahal and Captain Singral can see me after class about that very question. Well, I understand. For the rest of these gates, what exactly are their exit points? Their entry and exit points. How close are they to Federation assets? We believe that the attack on Starbase 212 happened through Gate C. And if, what, how it ties into the whole transwarp network, we're not sure. Uh, gates Alpha and Beta are most likely, most likely also tie into the transwarp network in some way. We suspect their primary use was ferrying equipment through the Empire.
or through the uh, the the Tholian Assembly. That's their fray. That's their government name. Through the Assembly. However, but being so close to Federation space, we suspect that they tried to keep their use as minimal as possible, just to prevent us from figuring out their assets, how they move their assets around. And do we are we aware of if we actually manage to succeed in our mission, and we manage to destroy these gates, will they have any inverse reactions to their counterparts? I just want to make sure that I don't send another sector, I potentially send a sector of space up in flames. We do not believe so, Captain. Um, based on uh, what happened with uh, when Janeway destroyed her section of the hub during her during USS Voyager's home, or trip home, there was uh, several s secondary gate entrances were uh, found and dis were found and ceased, ah, were found due to brief nadion bursts and then ceased to exist. However, future um, scouting of the Delta Quadrant uh, revealed that the hub remained intact. At most, we suspect there will only be uh, a loss of 10 to 20 gate exits. That will end, exit into the uh, Alpha Quadrant. In my opinion, I'd call that a pretty good um, increase in security right there. Well, it seems like you gentlemen have thought out this plan very well. And I most definitely approve. Good. Gentlemen, ladies, other intergender species, if there's nothing else, Please, you are dismissed. Uh, this, the strike will happen in two in three days' time at 0800 hours. Sink 0800 hours station zero time. Please make sure that your ships, uh, your ships uh, chronos are synced appropriately. Uh, at, without even giving more than a curt bow, Admiral Yamato leaves the. Uh, leaves the scene without really speaking to anyone. Can I check how he's feeling before he leaves? Admiral Yamato? Yes. Uh, sure. Um, roll me... Uh, just... Sorry? I, ju I just want to know his emotional state. Okay. Why he left so abruptly. Right. Um, so that will be an insight plus con, please. Uh, difficulty of two, since he's not intelligence trained. Okay. And then... Um... If you have empathy or persuasion, no, that doesn't fit. No, not really. Um, if you have anything like think... empathic skills, would work, but okay. And then just flat out roll with no. Uh... You do have momentum after all. Oh well, oh, you do oops. it anyways. Um, so uh, Admiral Yamato is a very driven man. Um, I, you get the sense from him that this is a he sees this as a job that must be done um and one that he is perfectly willing to accept uh however he has no time to make small talk um with anyone his he has a fleet to run and he has to get back to it okay Koox will just give himself a little smirk and just keep it to himself for the moment very well okay <clears throat> Um, so in the post session, post briefing session mingling, the various uh, crews are quick are chatting amongst themselves. Uh, Captain Singral and Commander Bashir, uh, you are quickly approached by a fairly, um, it's a squat turtley type of creature. Uh, most of you would recognize this as one of the species that has grown up in the right in the system of Rigel. Uh, they are known as I have their name written down. They are known as the Chelan. Um, um, they are a fairly militaristic style of um, or militaristic society. Although one that is more uh, Roman style than say Klingon. So they have um, order, uh, tactics, um, military strategy, etc. Um, 
his uh, uniform is bursting at the scene at the seams as he approaches you. Captain, I am Commander Truel, the USS Black Shield. I look forward to learning from you and hope that my tactical knowledge can be of assistance. The pleasure is all mine, Commander. Well, I'm grateful for your assistance. He nods. Greetings. Commander. Lieutenant Commanders. Doctor. Would would I be possible to be close enough to uh, see him approach? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I would like to uh, <laughs> make my way forward and just absolutely like... I'm, he's Koax is fascinated by... Uh, xenobiology so mm -hmm. he's less interested in the person behind mm -hmm. the turtle and more of like the the fascinating processes mm -hmm. uh so if it's not too rude he'd, he'd want to walk up uh does he have a hand to shake he does um it's a fairly massive clawed uh gauntlet more or less uh he will completely encase your hand in it and and, and Probably as we're shaking, instead of like there's the, the nod of approval and then halfway through it before I let go, Koax kind of lifts it up slightly and is kind of like sigh eyeing it. And then, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am uh, the chief medical officer of the Nighthawk. Uh, I, I didn't quite hear your name. I'm Commander Truel. Truel, it's a pleasure to meet you. I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting your, your uh, species before. No, we, uh, we typically stay within our own military hierarchy though that is what is familiar to uh the chelans however i was i found myself stagnated by the limited possibilities of a pro of using my talents thankfully starfleet intelligence had a place for me oh i can see by your physique you're a, a hands-on character you you like physical prowess uh, do you use um, any hand-to-hand uh, uh, -hand fighting? Is that something you're in interested in? or If I must, I must. I prefer to outthink my opponents. If a battle... If I've already predicted how I will win, then the battle is a mere triviality. Ah, cerebral. Very interesting that your uh, physique gives one of intimidation. I, I, I'm quite impressed. Absolutely. The... It is, I am often underestimated because of it. Strange how in a society that claims to be such open, open-minded and accepting of all forms of life, such stereotypes still occur. He makes, a he makes a gesture which one would think is a shrug for something without actual proper shoulders, but... Does his shell go up? <laughs> <laughs> more of a rolling of the arms rather than a up and down motion. Oh, well, you know, you, you must uh, forgive us, but, you know, generally physical prowess is one. Uh, the skills that are the most used are the ones that are improved upon, bulking of uh, physical physique. Uh, normally, when uh, a tactician shows up, they're not usually strong of body as well. I'm, you could color us impressed. He just, it is a genetic benefit, I must say. No, it looks like uh, we'll be working with you, and... Uh, Hopefully, at some time later, I'll be able to talk with one of your uh, one of your physicians. I'd be quite curious about your physiology. I will ensure that my doctor has my doctor sends over all relevant medical information. Oh, that seems uh, wonderful! Thank you very much. And Captain, he'll just kind of yes, step back. Captain, we will have time to talk en route. I must see to my crew. Good day. And he stop, and he will plod out fairly slowly but at the same time you have the feeling that he's just moving at his own pace rather than limited by his physiology uh, the other woman is wearing um, retractable body armor so it is um, characteristics of uh, bands of uh, metal on both wrist and forearm and chest that will um, that, that will uh, expand or telescope out as necessary to provide full body coverage Commander Helsing, you recognize the model fairly quickly as one that has been worn by frontline marines. And the eyebrows definitely go up in appreciation. And uh, she will approach the congregation. 
Captain Singral, I am Commander Su Tai of the USS Naginata. I pledge my service to you for the duration of this mission. Well, I appreciate that. You already know the mission, and we know what's at stake, and we know what you got to accomplish. If there's anything further you need, don't hesitate to contact me. Of course, Captain. I look forward to striking a deadly blow. And as she um, uh, strides past and makes her way out the door, uh, you also see a retractable polearm-style weapon that has been slung over her back. What it is, or what it would extend to, is not known. You'd have to see the thing fully telescoped. <clears throat> but her ship is the Naginata, right? Yep, yeah, USS Naginata. Foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. So, um, as the rest of you guys all file out... Uh, Director Chalmers makes a quick motion for everyone but the two captains to leave. Anyone care to object to the director? I will. Okay. If there's anything that the director needs to say to me, he could say to my first officer. He looks at Admiral Riker, and Admiral Riker says, it's, this is your idea, Director. Director says, fine. Fine, fine. Have a seat. and we'll get up and leave. Mm -hmm. I'll sit next to the captain. Sorry, the rest of you guys aren't cool enough. Might be. I'll just listen in through your head. It's fine. <laughs> I don't, is that possible? I, I don't see... Can you broadcast it too? I think you'd have to... I think <laughs> I, you'd both have to be full uh, Betazoid to pull that trick off. Oh, because I could be in his head asking him, and then he, I could be repeating what's said. <laughs> oh my gosh. I won't oh. do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I leave. Yeah. Okay. Um, Director Chalmers looks at the two captains and says, Right. Once again, Starfleet has gotten himself, has overextended and relies on Starfleet intelligence to pick up the mess. Captain Singral, Captain Rahal, you each came to me with similar reports of over-ambitious plans of the remote starbase initiative, um, extending Starfleet's reach far beyond what is capable of protecting itself. I believe that you're both correct in your assumptions, and have sadly reached a bit of an impasse with the other Admiral Riker, who has to be a bit territorial on the, on the matter. Uh, Admiral Riker just, he just smiles glumly and shakes his head. Admiral Riker, ins or that Admiral Riker, insists on keeping the remote Starbase initiative and its protection under Starfleet General. And he sighs. That said, he didn't mention make mention of anything about the space around it. So, Captain Singral, I've been talking with Admiral Zir of your uh, section and Admiral Tashani of yours of your section or sorry of admiral janeway of your section there um rahal and i believe we've come to a passive or at least a balance once this mission is completed you will each receive a small portion of starfleet intelligence ships to maintain sector uh, maintain a sector defense of the station and its assets However, Starfleet ships will operate in and around that area as normal, so you are, will each be required to communicate your current presence at your current location at the bare minimum with whomever is in command of the station. Uh, he realizes, Captain Singral, you're about to ask a very important question, and he interrupts you again. Yes, yes, Captain Singral. The Admiral, Admiral Zier is quite adamant on maintaining security of the Transwarp hub through regular Starfleet ships. As such, that balance is a little more tenuous. Your sector, your assets are to, prime, to ensure the safety and security of the Lasai Expanse. 
there will be another there will be a task force assigned to S deep space 15 that will be under control of any i can't believe i'm saying this they will be under direct control of admiral zier although even despite his recent incompetencies the captain of deep space 15 will be the one to relay orders to the fleet itself yes i've lodged a complaint several rather loudly but admiral zier says that she will handle him and will apparently flush his captaincy out the nearest airlock should he so as much breathe wrong so i trust her to do her job my first and only duty is to the defense of starfleet and its assets so it's an acceptable compromise as long as the job gets done you'd better believe it captain and if they're and if their job do isn't getting done at least i have eyes and ears nearby who will tell me if it isn't if their job is unable to be accomplished in the most timely of manners do i have leniency on intervening Let's just say that any that any rescue any rescue in Federation history is not looked badly upon in hindsight. Yeah, you might get a reaming out from the old blue one eye, but quite frankly, well, okay, you kind of report to her, but not really. We both know you report to myself. Maybe I should formalize it and make you report to Admiral Riker, but that would mean he'd have to show his face out there more often. He shrugs. I'll figure that out one day. Just, if you're going to save him, be heroic and be heroic about it. <laughs> well, I hope it doesn't come to that. For all intents and purposes, the crew of Deep Space 15 is quite capable. They just don't always show it at times, and it seems to happen at the worst possible circumstances. Yes. Well, anyways... Expect formal paperwork to arrive shortly after the completion of your mission. Dismissed. And with that, he and Admiral Riker uh, depart a different doorway, where there is an Orion female who is very happy to see Admiral Riker. And she is in full Starfleet uh, intelligence uniform and wearing commander pips as they depart another way. So, um, I'm going to leave it up to you guys what to decide how you wish to play this. Do you want a conference room with the cap other associated individuals involved? Or shall we just decide what gets done and move on? I'll leave that up to you. Uh, unless anybody actually has a scene that they want to play out, because nothing's coming to my mind right now. I don't mind. Uh, deciding amongst the crew of the Nighthawk who goes where. Okay. I personally prefer the uh, whole uh, going in the back door sort of way that uh, the Lieutenant Commander had suggested. I like that idea. Can we go through the, the gate itself? Like, can we enter in back in Service 15 and pop out the side? I and ride the shockwave back. Yeah. I believe that was the intention. Or, or even, get the uh, the tricobalt explosives onto the one of one of a shuttlecraft and just send it through. Well, that's one way to do it. If you're guaranteed that it was actually going to be enough to destroy the gate. It, is this your way of getting rid of uh, Jefferson? So, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Consider the even, ultimate test. Can you even trust him to fly straight? <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. At least the, the, the transfer pub, or yeah, the, the transfer pub would do it for him. So that's helpful. It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him that you have this great hollow sim you want him to run. It's his ultimate test. Oh, uh, boy. Okay, so that sounds like the route we're going to be going here. 
Um, cool. So let's take a 10 minute bio break while I rethink or while I prepare these scenes for what you guys have sprung on me. <laughs> and then we shall get back here in about 10 minutes or so. Okay. You All should right. come to Why expect that from the screw. I mean, why do I feel we've walked into his trap? We'll find uh, out after these messages. Uh,
and we're back. Hello, everyone. So, I believe that the consensus was that you guys were all going to be flying, or take the slipstream tugs back to the Lasai Expanse and enter in through the, uh, uh, the Transwarp Gateway. Erkin is very much pro in favor of that. Okie dokie, then. We on the Nighthawk do love our crazy plan, so... Also, before I forget, and to make this easier on everybody, I'd like to reconfigure the nuke we have specifically for this mission. Again, just in case we need to choose to deploy it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. And how do you wish to uh, change it? Oh, that's a that's I actually wanted to play that scene out as a meeting. Ah, okay. Uh, meeting where and with whom? On the Nighthawk with uh, Nighthawk personnel. Okay. Uh, the rest of the... The other two mm -hmm. uh, uh, commanders that are that are joining us are free to be, be in the conference room as well. Okay, so this will be a conference room. You got it. Or I mean, they could just tune tune in through Comlink, one or the other. But, Either, yeah, we're, yeah, this is definitely gonna be a conference room, Sam. Sure thing. Okay, uh, feel free to start up, and I will set folks accordingly. All right, gentlemen. Well, we all came from the meeting. We all came from the briefing, and hopefully, you've spent enough time trying to get to know everybody and everybody that we'll be working with. Also, the nature of their ships, their capabilities, and what we can and can't do. However, to those of you that aren't on the Nighthawk and haven't necessarily been made aware of, which I hope you wouldn't, because I mean it's classified, the Nighthawk, as I'm sure the rest of your ships are, is carrying sensitive. Uh, cargo and equipment. One of these, I will absolutely admit to you right now, but nothing I say obviously leaves this room, and it's only for the nature of the mission only that I'm revealing this information. Commanders, and, uh, those attending over the comm link, of course, nod. Alright then. Well, the Nighthawk is carrying a, uh, a nuclear device. Uh, I won't necessarily go into the details on how we acquired it, but it has been modified originally, to destroy subspace, if necessary, in means of a last resort a general, uh, last resort of acid denial. Just in case, considering the nature of this mission and considering its importance, I wanted to make sure that this asset that we have, hopefully, is not necessary to be in use. But if it's possible that, it is, that its services are required, um, I'd like it to be modified. In what way, I'm just not quite sure yet. I obviously don't want to deploy it and strand us all within Tholian space. At least in that case, we can be certain that the rest of the Tholians wouldn't be able to come after us either. It would take them hundreds of years. But in any case, I wish obviously not to deploy it with the possibility before we destroy the gate. I have no idea exactly what the effects of the Transwarp Hub would be. And to those of you that may be wondering if it has anything to do with a quote-unquote particular particle that you may be briefed on, I can assure you it does not. However, its ramifications are no less severe. So I'm here for suggestions. Um, so Commander Truel is uh, opens his mouth to speak. Captain, due to it has been theorized that uh, certain vibrations and frequencies could prove detrimental to the, the crystalline structure of a of a Tholian. However, such tests are or such tests on live subjects are immoral in all sense of the term. However, there are certain frequencies that could be used if necessary. If it could be rigged to emit such a frequency in a carrier wave, maybe. Well, that's a distinct possibility, but I don't see how a modification of one of our other standard pros wouldn't have the same effect. Yeah. Uh, Commander, it is possible. Yeah. Commander Ty is quick to speak up. Uh, perhaps it is more to do with the yield of the device rather than the modes of uh, transmission. If the device is what you say it is, um, and did you actually share the schematics of the proton bomb with them? Or subspace no. bomb now? Okay. No. Perhaps it's more. Perhaps it's simply more powerful than what the probes could do. 
Captain, I've got a wild and crazy idea. You seem to be full of them, and I'm always open to hear them. Uh, we could load the proton bomb onto our uh, Type X shuttlecraft, the one with the passive camouflage. And when we drop out of the gateway, we could de deploy the shuttlecraft, keeping it stationary and passive and invisible, technically. Uh, and then deploy it and detonate it if things go sour while riding the lightning away from it. I do like that one possibility. However, uh, that shuttle will have to be stripped of any other uh, Starfleet intelligence equipment other than, obviously, its quote-unquote cloaking systems, but bare minimum, updated with the newest alg algorithm, and if upon detonation, it will be self-cannibalizing, in the case that we're unable to retrieve it. I think once the bomb goes off, sir, it'll just be mere atoms. But I understand what you're saying. I can start making preparations on it right away. I'm not here to leave anything to chance, Lieutenant. I can also just put another bomb inside the shuttle that will be make sure. Can the shuttle oh. be remote remote piloted then? Or does someone actually have to sign up? I think we can remote pilot it. I think once we... Once we... Um, slip out of the gate as long as we just deploy it while well, while the shuttle is stationary it should remain uh, undetected or hard to detect by various sensors and then if we sort of distract the distract the, the other ships whatever's waiting for us on the other side just for a brief moment enough that we can set the activation codes and then blow up I don't know um, out of character, again, GM, can you remind me exactly what uh, what class the other ships we're taking with us are? Uh, you're bringing along two Phantom classes, um, so they're defiant in size. Okay, then. Uh, for s Just to make life easy for you, I will make them visible to you guys, just so that you can peruse them at your own leisure. But yes, please continue. I think... We also might actually be able to use that similar line of thinking to for an additional advantage. Typically, uh, at least in large situations like this, uh, the rest of the ships would come together and be able to use their sensor suites to set up a sensor grid. However, and I'm still on a, I still can't leave anything to chance. Even though Starfleet Intelligence has given us updated algorithms for our quote unquote cloaking systems. I still feel like a non-traditional approach would work best. How about, because we're modifying the shuttle, we also use it to, uh, to emit a stationary pulse, one that at least that we know that the, uh, the Tholians have been using or have used in the past, considering exactly what they did at Deep Space 15. And we can use that periodically to, uh, s along with ship sensors, to scan for possibly any other hidden ships that are going to be in the system. Oh, we might even be able to salvage some of the wreckage of the ships around Deep Space 15 to get a transponder. We just need to trick them into thinking it's one of their ships coming back just for a few seconds, and then that would give us enough time to position the shuttle accordingly. Well, I'm certain that Deep Space 15, considering the height of that battle, it definitely has enough transponders to work with. Once we get back there, we could probably go retrieve one and get to the get modification started. Any other suggestions, people? <clears throat> and Koax will uh, raise his hand for a moment. Well, by all means, Doctor. Uh, looking for it, actually, right now. Um, don't they have a telekinetic, uh, not telekinetic, a radiation bond with other um, of their kind so they can always sense the presence? Uh, do we need to rig up something to fake the presence long enough so their sensors will tell them it's a ship and possibly their sixth sense of that there are other Tholians coming back as well, or do you think that's not necessary? So I'd actually like to make and Coax has the ability to assist me here mm -hmm. um, a medicine check, and I'm going to try to kind of spitball what I'm doing you can tell me what best works for here. Okay. But I'd like to actually see if I could delve into our, our medical knowledge to see if the Stolian's radiation bond is any more similar or has at least shares any similarities with uh, other telepathic links. Or okay. is it like strictly, um, 
is it strictly kind of just like signal engineering based right because if so then i probably have something else that we could that we could try okay so uh just tell me what's happening uh that so that would be... be probably an ins i i would think reason plus medicine um i'm going to say difficulty of let's see difficulty of four just because tholians are alien and not a lot of their species sorry not a lot of their biology has actually been thoroughly uh understood yet by starfleet uh okay well, I think I'll actually take the lead on that role. Okay. And okay. Um, I'll, I'll assist. Okay, what was the difficulty again? Four. Four. So... Uh, this uh, is a scene one... change, too, so you're down to one momentum. Okay, are you guys okay with me spending our one momentum, then? To give a third Go dice? Yep. Mm, that's three dice. I feel fairly confident about that okay. with an assist. Sorry, which one of you is leading? As Captain said, he was leading it. Oh, no, I uh, oh. decided against that, actually. Okay. Oh, good lead. Okay, I must have been looking at something else during that time. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to spend the one momentum uh, for, so I can have three dice. Mm -hmm. um, xenobiology? Yep, that would work. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey! <laughs> oh, holy That's why. Crap. I'm what? amazing! Uh, one, oh. one, one. <laughs> People think I'm asleep in the med lab, but actually I'm researching other species the entire time. Okay. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. I'm you to work. I'm, can I still roll this assist anyway? That is a 1 in 8,000 chance there, people. So, uh... <laughs> that's the record. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, that's still only two momentum, so if the captain wants to assist, go for it. Okay. Um... Would... I don't think any of my focuses would actually apply here. Okay. Unfortunately. So. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Can't win them all. Nope. No, you cannot. Okay, so. Uh, and I'm scrambling to see if there's any mention of what you said in canon, but there isn't. But you said it was such fact, I'm going to assume that you heard it from somewhere. Um, from the Enterprise Mirror Universe episode? Um. um but I don't know if how much of that is in. I don't remember. I can, I can go look it up and throw you a page if you need it. Nah, not enough time. We'll just wing it, and I'll say, yeah. So what you understand is that there is a that th the Tholians are able to detect the presence of other Tholians, um, primarily through um, disturbances in radi in localized radiation patterns. Um, think of it as like how sharks underwater can detect electrical sources. Uh, through one of their specialized organs. Uh, that's how Tholians can detect the presence of other Tholians or other things radiating the same kind of uh, signal. Um, <clears throat> so, however, um, that works on a um, Tholian to Tholian level, but not ship to ship. Um, so, if there are means of detecting Tholian ships other than transponders, you are not aware of them. Uh, and that should be two momentum there, Erkin, not three, if I recall right. Oh, no, we gained two, but we had one. Yeah, yeah but he spent that one for... Oh, the... Yeah. That's okay. Does that answer your question there, Coax? Yes, it does indeed. Thank you. Cool. Kind of taken off of what Coax came up with, what if we had a pulse that we could send out that would disrupt that telepathic bond might throw them into even more confusion for any ships local in the local area what if we use our proton bomb to disrupt that well we're gonna need time to get things set up and to start making our our egress before we set it off uh Along with a multitude of questions that are being thrown at McCall's way, I have another. Mm -hmm. um, after the Tholians that we took into custody, yeah. after the uh, the incursion, where exactly, where where are the closest Tholians to that incident 
to where the Nighthawk's current location is. Uh, so the Nighthawk is currently en route to the station, and the Tholians were shipped off by a um, by a uh, Federation prison vessel roughly two or three days after the incident occurred. All right. Um, so they were shipped off by a prison vessel, but I'm assuming they're probably going to be still held into custody. They're not being transferred to penal colonies, penal colonies, penal colonies, obviously, considering the events that transpired. Correct. So. I want to make a detour. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> If that's uh, if that's that, possible, that is okay. What do you try? Uh, let's just narrate the detour because I we need to move on with the show if we want to end at a decent time. So, uh, what do you wish to learn from said detour? So I wanted to do the most shrewd thing. Oh, that I'm, I uh, should also mention. Sorry, I should also mention that you guys are on a time crunch. Uh, you guys oh. have. Uh, well, so we need it, to it commence was, it within 72 hours, right? That's right. Three days? Yeah, so it takes one full day to get out to Cerberus Station. So you at least, so you do have another couple days of, okay. you know, mucking about time, but this will eat up into that, so. All right, well, we need to go to Cerberus Station anyway because yeah. we were going to pick or modify something up there, right? That's, so, yeah, you were going to pick up some transponder stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll arrive there anyway, but... How I actually wanted to narrate it is that I wanted to get a group of Tholians that were present there during the incursion. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the telepathic races available to us, along with um, along with our engineers, to conduct another debriefing scene, okay. just to, to exactly hone in exa on what this signal is uh, between Tholians. Okay. And uh, if necessary, if we need to replicate it biologically, then... Um, Maybe we could use the telepathic races available to us just to use that as a counter to have them go as an in between and a countermeasure. Okay. But clearly, we need more information about this, which is why I wanted to go pick up a selling that was there. Okay. Uh, so let's say that um, it will take you another half day or so um, to detour out. Uh, the QSD tug is going to get rather annoyed at the detour because Benamite crystals are bloody expensive. But at the same time, has to be done. So, um, what you learn from this is that, well, first of all, telepathy is not going to work. I'm afraid their brains are not in any way, shape, or form um, con a compatible with your with your telepathic prowess. Um, it's actually. A, it's actually believed that they don't actually have a centralized brain, but rather a distributed uh, series of uh, nodes that process different parts of sensory input and arrive at a different conclusion. Or, or an assimilated conclusion. Which is why they're always so bloody hard to predict. Or actually why they're so easy to predict, really. Um, uh, there is some rec... Uh, due to their being studied in their in proper environment, because they're not class M uh, species, they're they, they like an environment of roughly 300 degrees Celsius, um, with several gases such as argon, nitrogen, and arsenic. So. And it appears that their radia the, the means of their creating their own um, radiation and dis disturbing it is very similar to um, a very complex form of uh, optical like optics, just for lack of a better term. So um, opt fiber optics, for example, you know, on off at stupidly fast speeds to make the ones and zeros that comprise literally everything that the internet is these days, they do something similar with um, their radiation organs. They flip them on and off at a very, very fast pace, w which creates very powerful short burst communications that Starfleet intelligence is yet to really understand. 
and this is actually the largest control group of uh, Tholian prisoners they've been able to get. Um, so they're quite excited at the data they're gathering, but the warden just doesn't have any good, doesn't have enough information for you. Well, I don't need to necessarily understand what these signals are. I'm mostly looking for a way to actually properly uh, segment them and block them out. So that's what I'd like to, if there's any other scientific or engineering or other, because you already said telepath, telepathic communication, or at least in that mm -hmm. sense is ruled out, which is fine. Yeah. But uh, in, t in terms of that, then we need to replicate it in other ways, biologically or mechanically or a combination of the two. So okay. that's what I'd like to at least to attempt to do. Okay. So with, we're... The, with the resources available to me. Okay. So this is going to be, um, let's have both the Shran and Coox. Roll me insight medical and insight engineering. So you're each we're... running. Up, oh, sorry. You're... Oh, I was just saying. So we're trying to figure out like the the frequency that they're that they're using, right? Yeah. The first. Pretty much figure out what they're using and how... develop a means to block it. Uh, so yeah, each of you roll me insight engineering or insight engine or insight medical, and this will be a difficulty of three. Okay, so I was gonna to... say my, my my approach to this would be try to um to block them is to just basically blast karaoke through the frequency and try to overload load so they can't get any other um could work. You'd have to develop a means of broadcasting said karaoke, but why does that not surprise me that you'll come up with something? So <laughs> uh roll me that test, please. What's the uh, difficulty you said? Difficulty three. Okay, would you like me to... So am I going to be the assisting party in this one? Uh, you'll each roll full. So you're okay. each doing your own test in your own way. Gotcha. Can I assist one or both with command? At least in terms of, like, measuring the responses on, like, a tactical or security level? Or, like, since we are attempting... It's kind of like an interrogation. It's, yeah. Um, I will allow the captain to assist both. Um, yeah. I'm going to send a momentum of anyone who has. Would cultural studies apply here? Um, yeah, I'll let it since it's a communication style. So yeah, I'll let that happen. Okay. Do we want me to spend another momentum or just leave it as his? Because he's got two. Yep, he's got two. So the captain could make it for third. And I haven't rolled yet. So yep, you haven't yet. So. All right, I'll just go ahead and roll. Yes, please. Um, can I can I use xenobiology as a focus? I'll let that work. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So hey. that's two successes for both. So Captain Singrel, depending on how you help and who, will determine whether we can come up with something. Uh, what would you like me to roll? Uh, for if you're going to assist with each one, it'll be insight medicine for Coox and insight engineering for Thashran. All right, I will uh, do insight medicine for coax because okay. my engineering is not fantastic. Since I'm still trying to use my command expertise, would you say that investigation would apply here? Yeah, or... that's dangling on a thread, but I'll let it. I'll let it slide. You're 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 allowed to say yeah. no to me. You yeah, know that. That's fine. <laughs> you do that. doesn't matter anymore. nope okay so medical avenue fails can you get lucky on engineering inside engineering everybody's gonna now see how terrible the captain is at a his engineering score mm -hmm. laugh everyone oh wow okay. oh, wow <laughs> wow all right all right uh so captain singral you've come up uh under your um, auspicious leadership, um, maybe Lieutenant Cassatt have helping from the side, um, you've come up with a means of deploying a override or a, a, basically a denial of service attack method on this band of radiation that they use to communicate. However, it is only equipable on Starfleet um, EV suits and doesn't and is not really that long that long a range but it's better than nothing well i mean we gleaned some information from here and i'll mm -hmm. take it okay and we're going to head off uh, in the means of keeping things moving because 
you know, time and all that, I'm going to uh, cut to Deep Space 15. And I believe Commander Dolrum has joined us for this scene. Hello, Commander. Hello. Hello. So, Commander, it is a fine day on Deep Space 15. The uh, captain is taking a bit of a... having some me time. And you have been left to man the shop. To... So, Commander Dolrum is here. <clears throat> uh... You are, um, ah, he was my character. Why can't I, oh yeah, uh, on ops, uh, Lieutenant Darval speaks up, um, Commander Dalrum. Yes, Darval. Three ships have just entered the, uh, Carceri Nebula's, uh, entrance. They are Starfleet. Interesting. We weren't expecting anything. No, sir. Open uh, Yes. Oh. Open inhaling frequency. Let's see if we can identify our friends. Yes, sir. So, uh, captain on the or on the bridge. Um, Lieutenant. Uh, da, I'm losing names. Helsing, your com panel chirps to life. Yes, that's Nighthawk. Hello, Nighthawk. I see. What can we do for you? Commander Dolrum, how are you doing? It's been a while since we've been there. Thought we'd come back and see what was happening. We always appreciate visits from friends out here. Uh, I have a feeling you might want to be talking to the captain. Let me pat you on through. Thank you. Captain Sengral? Hello, hello. Cerberus, did you miss us? I brought friends. We see that. Uh... It's always nice to see friends around the station. We don't get visitors all that often. What can we do for you? So, there is going to be a mission that's going to be mounting within, at this point, out of character GM. Mm -hmm. uh, since we had that detour, would you say another 24 hours? I would say 24 hours, yes. Okay, then. So, there's going to be a mission that's going to be mounted here pretty soon within the next 24 hours. And we need access to server's facilities, if you'd be so inclined. I take it the details of your mission are need to know? They are indeed, but there are a bit of information that I can transfer over to you personally. If you are wanting to transfer it, I will definitely look it over. But seeing as we are friends, you are always welcome to use our station facilities. Just, you know, give us a little heads up sometimes. I will most definitely give you a heads up, you know, just to make sure there aren't any Tholians on our back. Oh, yay. Those people. Yep. Those people. And while we're at it, you probably want to actually review a little bit of the, the uh, security upgrades and suggestions that we made following the incursion. But in any case, um, if all goes well, you have nothing to worry about. If it doesn't, then I think you and I need to, you and I need to have a talk about and preparing for retaliation. Understood. We've been implementing new security measures with our new chief of security, but it would never hurt to have someone review and give us some pointers on what we should continue to upgrade. All right, then. Very well. Understood. Everything else will be uh, sent over to your ship systems, and I'll meet with you momentarily. Sounds good. See you soon. Okay, so um, my understanding is you guys wanted the... Uh, Transponders from the wreckage, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, we're going to do the shuttle strip down scene. Um, so, that would definitely be Urkin. Mm -hmm. And who else wants to uh, strip a shuttle? I'd like an engineer. I mean, engineers are probably useful. So, I'll call um, the mm -hmm. Shran and ask him if he wants to help me. Yeah, sure. Uh, I assume this is different time than when we were doing the Folian thing. Ah, uh, correct. So it's or... it's it's now been um, it's now a, you know, life of a chief engineer. You fix one problem, and now they want you to break another. So, yeah, you're at this. You're at the uh, um, you're at Deep Space 15 now, and Erkin has requested either your assistance or someone else's assistance. Erkin, I'm always down to, to helping you strip. 
Ah, thank you very much. Very kind. Phrasing. Uh, at this point, I don't even know why I bother. Um, okay, so stripping the shuttle is going to be a um, daring plus engineering. However, because this is a small craft, uh, Urkin, you can substitute that out for daring plus con. Ooh, because Urkin. you're a flight controller. Yep. Um, this will be a difficulty of three. Okay. Would power systems apply? Uh, power systems are definitely in a focus that would work here. <clears throat> I'll use my small craft. Yep. Focus. Are we both doing this? Or both um, so, uh, Erkin is taking the lead because it's his ship, and you're assisting. Okay. Yep. All right. <clears throat> uh, do we want to use this point of momentum? Go ahead. Uh, sure. Okay, what do we got here? Wait for it. Well, that's two successes from Urkin and one from the Shrew. Oh, okay. Roll one more. We'll see if you get momentum. Yeah. All right, that momentum boomeranged right back. Fantastic. Ah, so um, you succeed in stripping out everything that isn't the b most bare bones navigation system and impulse engines. This thing is probably not even uh, void worthy at the moment. Perfect. Uh, I will, while we're stripping it out, I will say it prayers and stuff to the prophets to guide the ship to its intended destination and make sure that we arrive safely at our intended destination in one piece lest I meet the prophets in the stars okay. well I don't know the opening the aperture of a trans warp hub looks kind of similar to the uh, the wormhole yeah <laughs> who knows yep, no, it's not, <laughs> not dissimilar Maybe the prophets will find will t claim that as their new home. <laughs> Why am I giving myself plot ideas? I don't need this right now. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So that's that. Um, do you have anything else you guys wish to do with Commander Dalrum? Because I kind of interrupted his evening by demanding his presence. Well, I mean, we stripped. We got him all the way out here. We yeah. got to do something with him to justify yeah. his presence. So right. if Commander. Commander Dolorum's free to actually come on board the Nighthawk, or I could go. I could go to him. One or the other. Either or. I'm assuming that in the time you've between episodes, you have at least seen the Nighthawk up close and personal. I let's, would assume that. Let's just do this on the Nighthawk because I have all the sets. Works for me. Okay. Uh, Captain's ready room. Uh, the bridge, actually. The bridge. Okay. Onto the bridge. Uh, let's see. Alec isn't here. Jefferson is manning Khan because Alec is tearing things apart. And here comes Dalrum. And Commander Dalrum, you see the familiar uh, Togalau that has been. It's still in a pot for some reason, despite the fact it could fully grow by now. But it seems happy to be in a diminutive state. He waves. I wave back. <laughs> well, good Commander Dolorum, I'm so glad you could join us. Considering the nature of the mission that's about to be taken place, there's a number of things that you need to be aware of and that you will need to apprise Cerberus of, depending on the outcome of the mission. So, I am completely within my purview to tell you that within the next 24 hours, Starfleet Intelligence, <laughs> and I, you're probably, at this point, Sigal's probably going to wait for you to roll your eyes depending on I understand your relationship with Chalmers, but he'll keep going. And I'll continue to say Starfleet Intelligence is going to be mounting a mission for reprisal against the uh, against the Typhon Pact and the Thelians in particular. In this case, we're going to be hitting uh, the rest of the Borg gateways, and we're going to be hitting one specific gate, the one that actually leads into the Expanse itself from Tholian space. The rest of these ships here are here to support us in that mission. Barring that event, 
I assume that there are a number of uh, security uh, operations that you could put into place about the port, the station to ensure both the population of Starfleet and any potential remaining civilian populace. Is there anything else that you need from me? Could you possibly give us a time to prepare? Well, we are planning to leave within the next 24 hours, so I would honestly suggest making arrangements for this now. Um, I can understand that considering after, you know, the attack of such scale, and like I said, if there's any other civilian population that's left, they may be skittish. So it's up to you, but my personal recommendation is to take care of some of these arrangements quietly as to not spike an incident. But we're going to be hitting fast and we're going to be hitting them hard and hopefully they don't know that we're coming. If necessary, I suggest that you, well, it probably most definitely is necessary. May I, I will, let me rephrase. If there's any other further information that you feel like you may require, uh, I'm sure your Master Chief Ember, I'm, I'm sorry, not Ember, your new uh, intelligence officer <laughs> is mostly up to the task to give you any other direct information from Starfleet Intelligence that I may not necessarily be within my purview to do so today. However, at least in terms of your time for preparing, and if you need assistance, myself and the rest of this small fleet here, I have the ability to assist uh, while we're still on station within the next 24 hours. I would suggest meeting with our security chief just to see if our stuff's on par. I don't have all of his details of what he's been doing with the station. But I do want to ask, what should we be on the lookout for on our end? Like, if we start picking up things with our sensors, which we probably will. Well, I'm going to uh, just yell to whatever the closest engineer or... So I'm going to yell over the bridge to Rani. I'm just saying... Yeah, the Midas Array can't pick us up in uh, where we're going, right? No, sir. Best they'll see would be some sort of explosion through the Transwarp Hub if they've even deployed sensors that far. Well, I suppose that gives you your answer, Commander. Not a lot. All right. We'll keep our eyes out for anomalies, and if you need help, don't be afraid to holler. Oh, we I most definitely will not be. We do have a sensor grid up around the hub, so we can detect a lot of residual effects coming through. Well, considering that the damage to the station has most definitely been repaired, and it seems like practically almost everything is in tip-top shape, if such a thing were to happen again, it doesn't necessarily worry me that you wouldn't be able to handle any oncoming assaults, quote-unquote. So, I mean, if you're going to ask me to be an optimist, I think you'll be fine. If you're going to ask me to be concerned, then, uh, no. I mean, be concerned for us. But personally, I don't think you have anything to worry about. You could leave the worrying to us. That is our job. Well, Captain, if you need any supplies from the station, you are welcome to them, and we'll start running some uh, Preventative battle drills, just to be on the safe side. That would be wise. Make sure to give Captain Crawford my regards. I will. The fine captain is currently enjoying some time off while I'm in charge of the station. That does not surprise me in the least. <laughs> exactly, Captain. But we all have our skills. Well, in any case, I think that everything that you need has been given to you, and I believe our business has come to an end. Now, if you excuse me, there's still a few matters that I need to attend to. Good day. I understand. You have a great day, and Godspeed. Okay, and with that, Commander Dolrum will see himself off the bridge. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, trans ch modifying the transmitter, or transponder for the Tholian ship, once again, it is going to require some engineering expertise. Um, this could be assisted by either Helsing or, Thish or Bashir, uh, depending if you want to take a sciencey spin or a security spin on the thing. Um, this is going to be, again, a difficulty three test. 
And what would be the the attribute? Um, security? This would be control security, or control engineering, or control or control engineering for modifying the um, thing itself. And you can assist with either control security or control science or control engineering if you want. Well, I can do control security. Sure thing. So it's control engineering for me? Yes, please. What did you say the difficulty was? Three? Difficulty three. What would a good focus be? Um, shipboard ship, tactical? Shipboard tactical would probably be okay. Covert uh, ops? Ooh, Covert Ops. I like that one. Right uh, that. If you have something like Starship Power Systems or... Yep, I got Power System. Yeah, that would that would be okay for Transponder. Probably bending it a little bit. But okay, so that's a successful assist. All right. Uh, I don't mind. I'll take the momentum then. Sure. And there's uh, two momentum right back. So, <clears throat> uh, the Tholian transponder is larger than you had anticipated. It seems to take up a good. Uh, it's a roughly the half or the size of half a shuttle bay or half a shuttle. Uh, so finding a place to make to mount it and make it work is tricky, but not impossible. Um, you're able to change uh, you're able to figure out the identifying information of it and modify it so that as far as the Tholians are concerned your ship may as well be one of theirs at least until they can get whatever they have for eyes on it I should say that uh, if you use the Tholian transponder you're not able to use the uh, active camouflage systems so it is going to be one or the other Sorry, was that active the active camouflage on the Nighthawk or on the, A active, the shuttle? Active camouflage on the Nighthawk. Oh, okay. Since that's where I'm assuming you mounted the transponder to, not the shuttle. Yep. That's yep. Reasonable. Okay. Um, anyone have any other business before we head through the gateway? I'd like to write a personal message to uh, the rest of the staff okay. at... Uh, server station okay uh just to you know be be colloquial be 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 nice be char attempt to be charming <laughs> even though i understand we've all gone through some difficult times mm -hmm. and it's, i'm mostly doing it as a you know a show of respect so that you know regardless of whatever actually is happening within this region of space that we're you know we're here together on this so like i understand that everybody has their reservations and ye they're taking their own steps as well as us all right so hopefully you know everything necessarily goes off without a hitch all right and it's time for us to uh, work together on this topic. Okay. Um, Commander Dahlrum... As I say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I say, well, it's time for us to work together on this topic, as I say, leading my Starfleet intelligence assets on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. But that's... Um, so, um, that's really all I had planned for you, Scotty. If you have things to do this evening, you're welcome to drop out and do what you need to do. Otherwise, if you want to stick around and play a supporting character you can do that too i think i'm gonna scoot because i have to teach in the morning so you guys have fun and i'll make sure i catch up on everything i appreciate it thanks for taking the time out to co-op or co-op with us not a problem you guys have a great night cool goodbye friend goodbye, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Oh, okay. unfortunately your letter to the station started my last will and test <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fun. Okay, so, um, anything you wish to say to the uh, fleet under your command before you head out into the unknown? Yeah, I guess it's time for me to give that general battle cry. Go for it. So I'll look over and I'll just say, well, open hailing frequencies to quote-unquote, the fleet. I don't call it the fleet, even though it's not a fleet. It's your fleet, and that's all that matters. Exactly. 
This is Commander Truel of the Black Shield. Commander Sutai of the Nagadata. Well, we received both of you. This is Captain Sengrel of the Nighthawk. Well, I'll keep this short and sweet. We know our mission, we know what we gotta do, and we know exactly where we gotta hit the Tholians, where it hurts. All necessary modifications have been made. If there's any other thing that you need from Cerberus or you need to stand to your crews, do it now, because ladies and gentlemen and other non-gendered species, we are leaving. Our target is the gateway. We're gonna hit it, we're gonna we're come in the back way, we're gonna sneak in, and we're gonna destroy it. And hopefully in the intelligence the Starfleet intelligence way, where we don't leave any trace at all whatsoever. Now I understand that this mission necessarily for some of you who may or may not be more inexperienced, may necessarily come as a conflict of interest. You may, some of you may feel or you are aware of the arguments or the whispers that say that this isn't necessarily our pro this isn't necessarily our direct purview. You know, the defense of Starfleet should be left to Starfleet, to the Starfleet General and other you know surrounding ships. Well, we all signed an oath to the Federation. We, we all swore an oath to Starfleet intelligence. And the defense of the Federation is our intelligence. It is our business, and it is our business which we will still forth execute. And at that point, there's nothing else to be said. Godspeed. Well spoken. Well spoken indeed. And you enter one of the gateways. Let's just say it's this one. Um, as this is the, your first time through the Transwarp Hub, it is far smoother than you actually anticipated it to be. Uh, even transporting through um, any wormholes you may have been in, you did feel something um, that the uh, uh, dampening fields had, or the inertial dampening fields had to protect you from. But Urken, you there is zero resistance out there. Um, it's like the ship sort of just wants to go there. Wow. Um, you know, you plot the proper course, you know, take this, go starboard at this branch, go down at this branch, and you are eventually going to come out. Okay, so I'm assuming that the transporter, or I shouldn't assume, is the transponder active or is active camouflage active? Because the Naginata and Black Shield both have the active camouflage as well. Active camouflage is active. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. we gotta we gotta maintain that. We'll only activate the transponder as soon as we get closer, or we find it necessary, depending on what we find out there. But okay. Coming in, the trip coming in, camouflage is active. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a control plus engineering uh, with a difficulty of two, and the ship can assist with structure plus engines. Okay. All right, structure engine. Mm hmm. I guess I'll just use other momentum again to make sure we get the... Probably for the best. Uh, structure engineering? Uh, uh, structure plus engines. Uh, that's both of those. Oh, are I'm sorry. Uh, structure plus security. I'm Security? Yep, sorry. That's what I get for trying to do things by memory. Uh, so that's the three successes already for... Or that is one momentum right back from the Shran. And I'm just going to say that the two fleet ships activate successfully. And we're going to drop you out around here. Uh, let's see. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So, uh, with a burst of uh, light that fl comes and goes really quickly, you find yourself popped out of a massive structure. And this structure would be scale 10. Actually, no, it would be scale 11. So it is l much larger than uh, Deep Space 15, at least volumetrically. As you can see, though, most of it is hollow space, as you can uh, see there is the massive ring that is the center of the gate and there are several uh, protrusions um, around it 
Uh, you can see sort of habitation blocks attached to the port and starboard side of the ring. Um, several bright lights, or several lances, I should say, that seem to be doing... Uh, that seem to do some sort of stabilization beam, or sta allow it to stabilize the rift, for so to speak. And I should probably start rolling. Let's view out a little so that stream can see things. There's also several cruisers in the area. I'm just going to roll a couple dice here. Okay, that's a complication. And let's see, so you are within close proximity to the station, which rolled a complication, so station has no freaking clue that you're there. Yep. Um, next up is the ships, but they are too far. They don't make your DC. No, no. That one. I'm back. Hi, welcome back. No, actually none of them... You... There are several ships around, but at the moment, none of them seem to make any indication that they see you. Because they either rolled very poorly, or rolled well enough, but are outside of the range. Thanks to your act of cloaking. Well, I'm sure. We'll kind of... We'll... It won't take long for us to maintain this advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what were you gonna say, Rickon? I was just gonna say, uh, I assume they're all Tholian ships. That is accurate. Um, you okay. see uh, three Iktomi cruisers, the same the same ones that tried to ram the station poorly, and one Tarantula dreadnought. Uh, okay. They are currently holding station keeping, so they're not moving, and they are currently facing outward from the station. All right, and. You, I should say that you time your exit just as the clock hits go time. So at this point in time, um, hypothetically, the silent vigil and... Or hypothetically, at this time, Admiral Yamato's fleet has begun attacking their station. Within 30 minutes, uh, silent vigil will attack theirs. Uh, the USS Scryer and her fleet should be in position doing their thing. Now, the station itself is um, a fairly... Uh, tough, or fairly tough, You're deter you detect several um, inertial dampening fields in place, or not inertial, um, several uh, dampening fields in place to keep the thing together. Uh, heavy shielding would prevent direct damage from photon torpedoes. Um, but what is interesting is, um, due to how the Tholians have built this thing, is despite the fact that it has uh, shields, um, ah, uh, Helsing, you believe that your transporters should be actually effective. And I should take note that if I gave them the Naginata the right talent... Nope, not them. Or is it Black Shield? Or maybe I didn't give them the talent after all. Yep, so the USS Black Shield has the advanced transporters. Um talent, which allows it to beam through shields. Thanks, Jim Hadar. So the transporters yep. would be advantageous? Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as it's not our transporter chief making the rolls, I am completely open <laughs> to the Naginata. You said, right? The Naginata? The Naginata? Uh, uh, the Black Shield has the invasive oh, the transporters. Shield, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just completely okay with the uh, the Black Shield uh, taking over transporting duties, but I haven't decided that yet. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Right. We're here to we're here to destroy this thing, and as much as I would actually like to gather further information and beam aboard the actual gate itself, mm -hmm. um, I just we just gotta. We just got to destroy it, and we got to find a way to make sure we can power it back on before we fly back through. Okay. So, if that requires us actually using our advanced sensors or beaming on board to at least determine how the function is controlled, okay. then let's do it. All right. So, if you just want to scan from the ship, that'd be sensor science or sensors engineering. Or if you want to start beaming things, beaming aboard, that would be different. But, yeah. Now, we're going to continue... Uh, 
we're gonna beam aboard. Uh, we're gonna prepare an away team. Um, okay. Um, if uh, I don't know, I kind of want to beam different away teams to different sections of the gate, but I we could handle the other, you know, two NPC ships, I suppose, narratively. Yep. Um, if possible. Yeah. So at this point, I'll just put together an away team from the Nighthawk itself. Okay. So. Nighthawk team, who would you like to have on it? Well, this away team still are the purview of the first officer. So unless he disagrees with this decision, or anybody else wants to formulate a different plan, this is what we're going with, so he'll put it together. Okay, I got it. Um, Helsing, with me, one other security... And I could use an engineer. Okay. Recommend we leave Loxley to take the uh, security station on board the Nighthawk. Have just a red shirt go with us. Okay. Uh, she has to focus with ship more tactical. That... I mean, obviously, you'll need your, your best engineer along for this. Naturally. Okay. So just give me a second here to set up tokens. So it was. Helsing, Thashran, Bashir, and Johnny Red shirt. Okay. Should probably make and another security officer or two, but we can do that. Yeah, lower ratings or something. Yeah. Let me see if I can come up with something. Let me give it a shot. Okay. Um, do we want to go with uh, combat armor? Well, Laser rifles or just so quick? I should say that because uh, the internal temperature of the station is roughly 300 degrees uh, Celsius... Uh, you are you will need to take um, EVA suits. Um, if you want to spend threat, or if you want to give uh, spend opportunity, um, I think it's opportunity two. I will let you bring the armored variety, which just adds an additional point of resistance. Um, there's of course the problem that should things breach your um, if you suffer an injury in here, your suit will breach, and you have basically one turn to get out. Otherwise, so, you fry. The transponder you said that we created, you said, could only be attached to EV suits. Uh, the ra- the dis- the distrib- the disturber, yes. And mm-hmm. I'm giving that to you for free since you act- actively rolled for it and made it. So, okay, no for that. Yep. Okay. So yeah, we'll give you the threat, get the armored version for all of us, all okay. four. Okay. Um, so. Phaser two or phaser rifles. Rifles. <laughs> all right. I like <laughs> threat. Now I get to spend stuff. Okay. Uh, so transporting is going to be. Um, so this will be a transporter check. Um, so, uh, transporter chief Zell, whom, you know, could advance in some way so she could become better at her job and not beam up, or potentially beam up Vitar's children. (laughs) So, so that would be control plus engineering, uh, ship can assist with sensors plus engineering, and the... Difficulty is going to be three. I will roll for Zell. Okay. Control engineering. Mm-hmm. Remember that channel where she automatically passes everything with two extra momentum? I mean, at this rate, you know, something like control or, uh, you know, the control talent might be of use. Just a thought. Alright, 2d20 with a focus. Well, hopefully we're not rolling like trash. The captain's going to try his hand. He's drawing this out long enough. Nice. Ooh, quality. Uh, she does well. Um, uh, what are we rolling for the ship? Uh, sensors engineering. Sensors. Engineering. Yeah. Uh, always focus, right? Yep, always focus. Hey, and still rolling momentum. like yeah. fire tonight. Wow. Okay, right. you're maxed out uh, momentum. Nice. Perfect timing. 
Okay, and because you guys rolled so well, they're not. You guys beam in here. So. And because the station rolled so poorly the, in detecting you, they rolled a complication. So you guys get to act a little bit without um, uh, uh, without being uh, detected. But it's not going to last too long. Roughly maybe two or three minutes at max. What would you like to do? Awkward interruption to yes. take away agency from the away team. Mm -hmm. What about the other away teams that beamed over from the other ships? Okay. On the other parts of the station. Do we, I just want to know if the transport was successful all around. <laughs> Good question. Let's find out. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's still two degree success for the Black Shield. And, yeah, Naginata did well, too. All right. Well, carry on, gentlemen. All right. Security, watch our backs. We're hitting the computer banks. Okay. Done and done. Okay, um, so what do you wish to gain from the computer banks? Everything and anything, honestly. Uh, okay. um, mainly how this works and technicals. I want to know how this works, and I want him to get tech. Get getting techie with it. Um, okay, so despite the um, nature of the set piece, this is actually a fairly crystalline structure funny they don't actually have many uh, tholian interiors on uh, art station or deviant art wonder why um the so everything is fairly alien to you guys and the fact that it is boiling hot inside your suit even even though the suit is doing its best to keep you alive is challenging at best and you're dealing with an alien computer so you are facing a difficulty of four test for hacking um, given that you're under cons time constraint, I'm going to say that this is a daring engineering task. Um, computer, so, so something computery for focus. And difficulty of four. Uh, and for more fun, I'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty or increase the threat range for 18 to 20. then maybe I should be bold and buy a D20 using... Ooh. Okay. Uh, okay, so maybe I will... Then I'll use some momentum to buy a, a D20 and also give you a threat to buy another D20. Uh, so if you're buying... So this is... Oh, I can do both, right? Um, can I do both? Or... No, sadly you can't. It... No, I'm sorry, you can. So it would be one momentum for one dice, and then two threat for the second dice. Or one threat for the first dice, and two momentum for the second. So Let's do one threat and two momentum. Okay, so you're down to four momentum, so... Uh, any one of you guys could assist, if you'd like, with uh, engineering plus... Or daring plus engineering. So, I'll assist. Yep. Uh, and I don't think that... Yeah, I have nothing that really applies. I don't have any power systems in the warp field. Yeah, those ain't going to work here, I'm afraid. All right, I got to reroll 1d20 since I have bold. Let's see how this goes. That's right. Well, I know which dice you're rerolling. All right, I'm going to reroll that one. Okay. Nice. That is four successes, five successes. So you get one momentum back. Cool. And despite... And you don't trigger threat for any of that. Bummer. <clears throat> uh, you find a... So you've obviously been um, studying uh, Tholian engineering and computer systems since you first encountered them there, uh, Thashran. Uh, this system is extremely hardened against um, intruder attacks, but you seem to you treat it like a karaoke machine um, and make, get it to sing for you. Um, this is what I live for. So you download the station's specifications, um, including the activation code for the gate. Um, you also you also find the uh, you also find 
where else this gate could go if necessary. So, you know, several other lo local gateways that are along the route. Uh, one of which would, uh, both, ah, sorry, all three of which, well, all three other gates are on this route, of course. Mm. Um, what else do you get? That's pretty much about it, I would think. Um, that's, and it's at this point that an alarm begins sounding. And, uh, Liam Helsing, it's, you don't have to speak Tholian to understand that it's an intruder alarm. Need to hurry up, sir. So, well, the Shran, you get to close your tricorder in theatrical fashion, and your task is done. What do you guys wish to do? Wish to do? Got it. Four to beam up. <laughs> All right. Zell, hit it. Okay. Uh, difficulty three, transporter test, please. Uh, control plus engineering from Zell. Ship assists with sensors engineering. Lieutenant Commander, do you have any grenades on you? I don't think you guys spent threat to bring any. I've got the ship. Yes. I just rolled the ship. Okay, oh, so okay. ship got one. Who's rolling Zell? I will uh, take care of Zell again. Okay. Should we just should we give her a talent now? Sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. How about how about cautious? Uh, cautious in the main book, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, cautious is uh, you can suck your discipline, and whenever you buy um, buy the twenty momentum, you can reroll. All right, I will copy the uh, the actual talent of the text later. But I mean, if we already know what it does, then we'll just say it applies here for this roll. Yep. So you need cautious to... control. Uh, yeah, you have to, if you buy if you buy the twenty momentum. Yeah. So you need to spend one momentum. For the dice? Uh, sure. I figured you would. And this is going to be another control engineering check? Correct. And this is, since we're buying a dice, it's 3d20? 3d20, that's correct. Wow. Wow. Okay, uh, well, you make it, but feel free to reroll one of those dice, see if you get that momentum back. Sure, sure. I think our momentum tracker went on hiatus, so you're technically at four. So let's see what happens. Okay, well. Well, I, th I don't actually know in the rules if you keep the better value, so I'm just going to say you keep the better value and just fail outright. Okay. <clears throat> So the Tholians enter just as you guys beam out um, through the sparkles of your dematerialization beam. There are several energy blasts that do more damage against the wall than to you guys. Uh, let's see if folks are lucky with the other ships. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um... Welcome back. Um, they're at four momentum now, uh, Erkin. Um, so the USS Naginata it begins reporting f uh, firefight on the in one of the uh, habitation areas, and the uh, USS Black Shield reports that all personnel have re have reported uh, uh, on board successfully. <laughs> Okay, then. Well, so the Naginata still has uh, boots on the ground. That is correct. And so our Commander Tai is beginning to order a additional security team to go assist. Everybody gets home today, gentlemen. So if Commander Tai is already having an additional security team covered, um, my current objective is probably trying to block the broadcast and make sure the actual other ships that are out here don't start moving to assist and if they do then we're going to go engage okay so this will be a communications jamming test and i believe that the scryer has some form uh or the nighthawk i should say has some form of talent that helps that if i recall right i could be wrong yes it does it, it does. does yes it does okay so you can 
Um, so uh, this will be a jamming test, which I believe is a communications plus security. And you get to set the difficulty here. So it could be anywhere from one to four, but you have to beat that test first. And then if you beat it, then others, then it's jammed until others will attempt to override it. Okay, so the difficulty doesn't scale. Um, difficulty, I don't believe scales. I'm checking now, but let's see some rolls from whoever is doing it. So that would either be Thashran or um, da ah, Helsing. And my role would be... I believe it is... Signal jamming. So, uh, sorry, control plus engineering task. Uh, assisted by ship's communication security. So, um, which of you wishes to do the main task? My engineering is pretty bad. Okay, so probably Thashran will do this from engineering. All right. Okay, so control plus engineering. Uh, you get to choose a difficulty of one, two, or three. So. Uh, Coax, you want to do the ship? Certainly, sir. You got the hot dice, man. <laughs> All right, <how laughs> about, you tonight. I'll 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 buy a die of momentum and I'll set difficulty. You cut out right at the important number. What was the difficulty? Three. Three. Cool. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll have a momentum and buy it. Okay. okay. And it was sensor security for the ship? This would be communications plus security. Oh, communications. Yeah. Now, you bought that dice with momentum, correct? Yeah. So okay. You three in. So three you can't re-roll it. Gotcha. Ship does it. Okay. So the ship does it, and we will see if the station is capable of overriding nice. that task. Uh huh. They do not. The station is un the station is caught unaware and is unable to alert the nearby ships that what is going on? Okay, so while uh, the Naginata is fighting to reclaim her crewmen, uh, what is it that you guys wish to do? I, I unfortunately missed the last 30 seconds of that, so um, quick up to speed. Did we succeed? Uh, you, yep, you succeed. The station cannot call for help. Naginata is currently has another team on the ground fighting to regain their crewmen. And the Black Shield is... An, or, Captain Trull is already pointing out points where the tricobalt devices could be planted for the best explosive uh, effect. All right, well, we're going to start planting the tricobalt devices. Um, okay. The Naginata, you know, regardless of how much, even though I'm saying everybody gets home. That's, uh, that's their problem to deal with right now. we got to try to accomplish the mission first. So whether or not we beam these devices in or we need to manually set them, Okay. I guess you'll tell us. Okay. So, um, Erkin, the shuttlecraft that you have, do mm. you wish to do anything with it, or is it still in the shuttle bay? Uh, I think it's still in the shuttle bay. I don't think we're in a situation that requires it at the moment. All right. Okay. Because we're still undetected. That is actually quite surprising. But cool. Yeah, I'm surprised too. <laughs> I was expecting several uh, piloting checks from you to sneak through their pickets with your active camouflage, but nope, you did. You came through the back door. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But hey, that's why you're the intelligence crew and I'm just the GM. So, um, so you have your choice of detonation methods for these tricobalt devices. And for the sake of plot, I will say that they are tested to within 99.999999% um, accuracy. So they will blow up how and when you want them to. So they could be set to blow up um, at the push of a button. Or they could be set to blow up at a, you know, on a timed delay or proximity, if you wish. Well, uh, we're going to wait till 
we're going to plant them first, and depending on whether we can retrieve the Nagonada's crew, mem crew members or not, then we'll decide exactly when we'll detonate them. Since as long as we still have signal with them, and we can uh, actually change the sequence of detonation, then I have no problem actually just waiting and waiting, waiting to see what okay. happens next. Okay. Um, yeah. So the battle for the Naginata crewmen are not going all that well. Um, they're reporting that two individuals have been killed, while the well, uh, Commander Ty, on the other hand, is actually racking up a decent body count. Um, these the fight is sadly still ongoing. All right then. Well, we got to move to plant these devices regardless. Yep. So this is going to be a control plus security task, um, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to do this as a pseudo extended task. There's not going to be a work track, but depending on how well the first one goes, will determine how the difficulty of the second and the third. Um, so this is going to be control plus security. Um, if you have, say, demolitions or weapon systems or even structural engineering, that would be good. And the first test is going to be a difficulty of three. And the ship, uh, the ship can assist with sensors plus engineering, or actually even sensors plus weapons in this case. Wait, nope, okay. I'm sorry. Sensors plus security or sensors plus engineering. Fairly well trained in control and security tasks, so I can okay. try planting them. Okay. Okay. Uh, give it a go there. Yeah. That sounds like a volunteer slash order to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I would like to spend the momentum for an extra dice. Okay. Are you doing this in the? Fa are you doing this via the transporter, or are you actually using this as an excuse to take the Spectre out to play? Uh transporter. Aw, okay. I don't okay. want to risk an additional. Fair enough. Last time you took the Spectre out caused uh, station damage, so I figured why not try to repeat it? Well, I'm, I'm not trying to ram it yet, but True. Uh, all in good time. True this that. Is, this, there's still lots of time and this can go sideways. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, make the roll. Uh, I do not have a focus. Unless animal handling counts. Ha! Uh, no, no. The, uh, these are a beast of an explosive, but not quite the beast you're used to. Uh, right. Come on, baby. Well. Okay. Well. Uh, ship ship, ship can assist. I mean, you could spend the last two I momentum guess. to negate yeah. that, but well, that's up to you, really. We'll see what the ship does. Uh, see what the ship does. Uh, who's rolling ship? Hello, ship. Hello, computer. I got it. Thank you, Helsing. No problem. And for the ship... Uh, hang on. Um, you rolled... Sorry, Erkin, you rolled command... Or you rolled... Oh, my God, I hit control. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, well, let's see. I... It wouldn't have mattered. My security no. is four. Yeah. So... And that's a 20, so that would have failed anyways. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Ooh, I should have spent more threat. Oh, next time. Okay. Uh, yeah, so sensors Can... plus security or sensors plus engineering. Sensors engineering. Okay. Nope. Um, so the first tricobalt device is planted. Um, however, its magnetic clamps do not... Uh, don't seem to be adhering properly to the crystalline structure of this or the hardened chitin of the station's armor and it sort of just slips off its mooring and starts drifting aimlessly into space well let's see if we can get another uh walk on that to try to get it back into position <laughs> okay i am not going to actually attempt to send out any ships here okay. yet in risks of uh, detection by the rest of the fleet out here. If okay. we can, as bad as it sounds, if we can keep this fighting internal, it's for the best. That would be fair. So are you going to be deploying the second? I should say you have four, um, between all of you, you have a grand total of four tricobalt devices, and three need to be planted for the station to go boom. Yes, yeah, so we're Crackery. planting the second. Uh, can we not uh, just well. transporter lock on the drifting one? You can try. Try to reposition it. 
it's a small signature and at this point um yeah you can try whichever you guys want to do uh well i don't think there's any harm in trying to lock onto it then if that fails we'll just deploy a second okay so transporter beam well uh zell's done well so far so all right well yep. i guess i'll go roll for zell again mm -hmm. Ship is... this will be another... uh, control engineering sensors engineering difficulty of three and i'm going to spend some threat to increase complication range 17 to 20. I'll go ahead and buy, since we have the control talent now, I'll go uh, get a die. Um, cautious talent, but yep. Cool. Ship got one. Ship got one. Huzzah. Huzzah. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so go that's go, two go. momentum. Zell apparently has taken some remedial classes in transporter um, chiefdom. Uh, when has successfully beamed the uh, explosive device from its floating zero G experience and has plopped it where it needs to go. So that is one in place. Uh, second one in pl let's give me let's see how the fight is going on the ground. Not doing so well. Uh, Sutai has been injured actually and has been beamed back to the back to the Naginata. The others are, the others are doing a controlled withdraw, but casualties are higher than they'd like. Uh, they're beaming out. They need to make their way back to a place that is um, friendlier to transporters than their current environment. Anyways, next. Um, so this is going to be another control plus security test to plant the second explosive. Okay. And because it took you so long to do the first one, it's still going to be difficulty of three. Uh, ship can assist with sensors plus security or sensors plus engineering. I will, whoops, I will spend another momentum. Okay. One from the ship. Excellent. And that's another two. The second one is placed with great finesse um, thanks to the intricate use of the ship's tractor beam. And finally, um, the Nagana, the crew of the, or Sutai reports, um, despite being, um, going through agonizing pain, uh, she reports that all crew, including the casualties, have been transported back to the Naginata. And at this point, uh, so a final check, please, for the third explosive. Uh, this one's going to be difficulty two. Okay. Ah, I did command again. Sorry. Yes, you did, uh, but not nothing so from the ship. Not yeah, I rolled so. An 18. Yeah, I rolled an eighteen on the zero. So uh, I should have spent threat. Uh, GM sad. Um, so a reminder: you could spend determination to re-roll zeros here if you'd like. You don't have to, but uh, yeah, I'll do that. Might as okay. well. My determination. My determination will be that my patience patience yields the best crops. So that works. Extra careful and slow and meticulous with the tractor beam. Uh, so I'll reroll mine. And reroll the ships too? Are, in, is it all uh, the zeros nope. in the same check or just mine? Just yours. Oh. Ah, uh, poop. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But you only need one success, so. I only need one success. Yeah. Hi -ya. Oh, well, Bob. worth a shot. So, sadly, that didn't work. Um, once again, it uh, something on the state on this particular structural is not or particular structure is not working well with the station or with the uh, ma with the tricobalt device. And at this point, the station has gotten has been able to break through the communications jamming signal. And two of the Iktomi cruisers are 
booking their way in. Well, gentlemen, now it seems like the real fight begins. But we still got a job to do. I'm going to alert sick bay to prepare for possible casualties, because we, we may be joining the, uh, the Black Shield and the Naginata soon enough, but here's hoping we don't. Okay. So, one final... Uh, I will allow for one final check before... So, uh, one final attempt at transportering. So, Chief Zell, do her thing. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. One moment, please. Of course. Cool. Actually, you want to roll? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all that's the chips good, are down on you, man. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's all you. <laughs> it's it's well, going to be no nothing much. but complications. Watch. I know. Okay, it's a... <laughs> yeah, we're all going to die. Sensors engineering, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, talk, talk like that is treason. Nothing but happy thoughts. That's an order. Okay, sensors and engineering? Positive yep. wave. Sorry, okay. I'm hearing lots of people saying sensors engineering. Which one of you is rolling? Uh, Coox rolling for ship? Yes? Cool. Oh, you should roll for Zell. Oh, boy. Okay, do you guys... Which one do you guys want me to do? <laughs> I'll figure it out quick. Otherwise, these ships are going to start firing. Well, they I actually... you. To roll for Zell. Okay, roll on for Zell. <laughs> roll on for ship. Okay, and for Zell it was one more time. Con sorry. Control engineering. Control engineering. Okay, no success. No success from Helsing. This will be a difficulty three, and you have two momentum mm -hmm. left. Okay, so we need to spend one of that momentum for a mm -hmm. third dice. Yep. Yep. Um, and then there we go. Uh, focuses transporter systems. Naturally. Okay. Yes. Okay. You can, you can reroll one because you bought a momentum. Yeah, you can reroll one. There's a possibility okay. that it'll be a crit. Uh, Hail Mary. I don't know if okay. she's. I don't know if someone's Praise given. The prophets. I don't know if someone's given her a value with a past activation, but you could always, if she has a value, you could spend the determination to tap that value. But uh, can we give her a value now? No, she's already <laughs> been activated this sex this session. Okay. So. All right, rerolling one. Okay. There we go. Hey, better, 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 better. Well, that's two. It's not that a terrible is... failure. Nope. That's not ter. Yeah, it is what it is. So things are not working out all that well as the Naginata. Uh, the Naginata moves to intercept, as does the Black Shield. Um, they. They ask the Nighthawk to continue the mission while they deal with any potential interference. Okay. Well, at this point, mm -hmm. we've uh, we've tried transporting, and I just don't feel like that's gonna be in the card. So I'm gonna say we're gonna place it manually. All right. Yes, sir. It's. I'm assuming. Uh, so how how do you mean by Ins or attach it manually. I mean, we're going to actually fly a ship out there and get as close as possible. Okay. Um, this sounds like an Urken thing. All right. That's at this Spectre. At this point, I assume... I, I like to imagine that Urken at his console just says, Computer, activate program Spectre. And you just <laughs> literally beam yourself to it. A satisfying pop, and then I'm in the ship. You are in the ship. You as a specter, there you are. Uh, I, hmm, I vote actually to take the Type XX. Okay, the one that you've cannibalized, or the other one? No, the one that we've can cannibalized. I'll ah. wear an EVA suit just to make sure that, even though it's not space worthy, I'm space worthy. That's was the thing I was going to ask. And then if, if for any reason I can, so I can be transported off of it, and then the bomb is ready and placed. Well, that'll be up to Zell. Or, I mean, you could just void yourself and use your EVA suits, maneuvering thrusters, to try to get back. That would be oh, fun, no, too. Not, I meant the big nuke. Oh. Because it's on the board, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the captain's permission, of course. I'll monitor the situation. 
Okay, so at this point, the um, Ikatomi cruisers are going, well, let's see. The, because they're not close range, they have what's called phaser lances, and they're going to fire them. Oof. One. Uh, so the Naginata attempts a phaser lance, which is a long-range directed, or uh, directional phaser beam, uh, this cruiser, and will miss rather uh, badly, actually. However, the black shield will nail the Iktomi cruiser with his, hers, its, lance, and deal some decent damage. Okay, uh, Urken, this is going to be a daring plus con test. Oh, I was born for this. And Nighthawk, at any time, if you wish to assist them with weaponry, just let me know. I'm, I'm not going to run full Starship Combat because it's cumbersome and... I need to find a better way to run it. That meets my GMing style. All right. I mean, I'm sure while we're waiting for Erkin to do his uh, flyboy job, we could launch some weaponry okay. out there to assist. Okay. Uh, so let's see. You are at uh, six hexes for that one and seven for that. So you are within law long range for uh, where did it go there it is you're at long range for Iktomi cruiser up north I'm going to call it Iktomi cruiser A and Iktomi cruiser B you're so you're long range to Iktomi A and medium range to Iktomi B um Nice job, Erkin. Um, Thank you. Oh, feel free to also roll your ship. Um, I don't think I gave you oh. the difficulty, did I? I? It would have been difficulty three. So. Three? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so you can someone can roll a Type XX shuttle's engines plus con. Check. I've got it. I've got it. Okay, that's fair. Um, Helsing. Do you, um, control security. Control security and ship assist with weapon security. Are what? Are we shooting? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well, that, I was about going to ask you the exact same question you were going to ask me, <laughs> or ask the GM. Uh, Captain, photons or laser? Or pho phasers? Photons. On the way. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming you'll be firing at this Iktomi A, because that is... Yes. Okay, so difficulty three. So that's two from Helsing. Uh, someone roll the ship's weapon security, please. Weapon security. That'll do it. Now, are you firing one or a spread? A spread. Excellent. More threat for me. Huzzah! Okay, so roll challenge dice, um, plus one additional challenge dice. And let's see, so that's five, six total. I believe that's the case. Yeah, that's not a lot of damage. You could always spend momentum to um, either increase damage or increase piercing. And while I'm thinking about it, I will add the combat momentum chart for you because I am a good GM. And there you are. Uh, I try. So Sometimes I succeed. Okay. Was it two to reroll zeros? Uh, one to reroll zeros. That might get us, do us better. There we go. Do you want to reroll zeros? Yeah, I'm I'm down to reroll them. At this point, it's more of a. a, a there tactic. we go. Oh, holy crap! Okay, so torpedoes have the high yield, which I think increase breaches. Um, Double check that. Do, 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 do. So eight with four effects. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If it does one or, one or more breaches, it does another an additional breach. Okay. So, ah, so it only deals one additional breach. It doesn't deal one per effect. 
Oh, I'm thinking of uh, Vicious and Damage. Okay. But I'm running an NPC more thematic. But yeah. So, Erkin, as you uh, depart your on the shuttlecraft, uh, you notice behind you the Nighthawk uh, with its aft towards the gate, spinning in a l- slow circle and launching a volley of torpedoes. But there's no time for the fireworks. You have a... Tr- you have a uh, you have a explosive device to deal with, and deal with it you do in quite <laughs> spectacular fashion. God, I should have done this the first time instead of embarrassing myself in front of the captain. He didn't himself. <laughs> uh, so it is a fairly quick op. It is a fairly quick operation for you to find tractor and place the third explosive. And That's we. Good. Enough for one more round of combat just to see how the other ships do. Ooh, Naginata does well. Wow, so does the Black Shield. They both punch... Uh, let's see. So Black Shield is going to get... Uh, actually, Black Shield's going to fall back a bit while the Naginata gets closer and pummels Cruiser A with its cannons, leaving very little of it alive. And by very little, I mean none of it. Whereas the Black Shield pulls back and launches a... Uh, mirrors the the Nighthawk's uh, torpedo salvo. And deals a significant amount of damage to Tommy Cruiser B. Just not enough to destroy it outright. Would the Nighthawk care to do anything? Mm, well, if, uh, if our intrepid pilot was successful... I can end the uh, last tri cobalt device placed. We consider our work done here. Well, that's up to Urkin to tell the captain. Yep, captain. Uh, device placed. Shuttle is in position. Should you wish to use it? Uh, otherwise, it can just be brought on board. All right, then. Well, I'm going to say a complete retrieval, and I'll motion to the other ships that we're pulling out. And it's time for us to set these... Uh, Determine, determine exactly how quickly the rest of the ships could come, could make it through the gateway if we give them about like a minute and a half, two minutes. Okay. So, um, the ships are able to, or your, the friendly ships are able to uh, move in fairly quickly. Uh, so you, uh, actually, the delay would be, the thing that was slowing the whole operation down is waiting for the shuttlecraft to dock. But that, but that could probably be bypassed with a decent daring plus security check as Urkin just disobeys oh, all safety. Into, I am ramming it into the shuttle bay. Okay, this will be fun. Uh, roll me a daring plus con, and I'm going to spend threat to increase threat range 16 to 20. Don't harm the thermonuclear device. Yeah, I'm Wait, which it. cargo bay are we keeping that in? <laughs> <laughs> One not far enough away. Ooh, fun. Okay. Oh, really? Uh, okay, 11, 11. Well, ship can assist. Um, if I didn't say this Got is difficulty it. three, and the ship can assist uh, with engines plus con. Don't you have like a bold talent there? Oh, wait, you didn't take a threat. I do. Oh, I did, I did you did threat, buy. Yeah. Ah, yes. I, I bought momentum, but I did buy threat. Right. Which ship can assist? His shuttle or uh, our, the night? His office? shuttle. Oh, it didn't. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to say that, um, Erkin, you make it in. However, Yay. you suffer a, uh, um, and you suffer an injury. Okay. Um, so, um, you are thrown against the, or your seat, you hit the, ah, I'm sorry, multiple ideas happening at once. Uh, you fail to stop the, your shuttle in time, and you slam the, Ball, the uh, end bulkhead of the shuttle or of the shuttle bay um, your seat de- shears off and throws you against the windscreen knocking you unconscious okay um, y- whoever is monitoring ops up on the bridge will inform you sure sir the shuttle is aboard however I'm detecting a significant impact <laughs> there, there was a bee <laughs> yeah so, 
Shuttlecraft A is on board. Okay, so... Um, Med medical personnel to Shuttle Bay 3. Cool. We'll deal I'm going with, to run. We'll deal with Coax shortly. Okay, uh, the Naginata and Black Shield both report that they are in position and are ready to get out. All right, then. Well, the Naginata and the Black Shield can make it through the gateway first. The Nighthawk will follow. We'll go last. Okay. Uh, you send the proper command codes that you retrieved from your successful um, infiltration, and the gateway opens up um, into a bit of an angry red vortex. Which is odd, because the transwarp gate at um, Cerberus opens in a more or less pleasing blue. You have a feeling it might be something to do with the technology involved, and the fact that they're Tholians and love red. So, the USS Nighthawk is going to be the last one through. Um, sadly, the Dreadnought is not going to let this go without one fight. Also, GM just wants to shoot at you. I will spend threat to make this happen, so it's somewhat fair. Oh, that's going to be a hit. And how much damage is it going to do? <clears throat> It'd help if I was on the right menu. So, that's that. Just going to hit you with that. That's... Okay, that is 14 damage, which, uh, let's see, so Nighthawk is scale 5, so that is 5 resistance off, which still makes that 9 damage. So that is going to drop the Nighthawk's shields by 9, and that is enough still to cause a breach. And I would roll my... Um, I don't actually have the macro, but I do have the table, so I'll just roll the table. Okay, um, so structure takes a breach. <clears throat> All right, ship has been updated. Two nope. shields remain. Okay, um, so because structure took a breach, I get to roll one challenge dice. Just... Do we rock to the left or the right? Um... Um, if everyone could just sort of throw themselves somewhat violently to the left on the queue of the director, that would be appreciated. Okay, uh, rolling one challenge dice. Nope, the no-named crewman is injured. Okay, so Nighthawk, you take a massive goodbye punch as you turn and enter the gateway. I'll accept that. Okay. So... Uh, we're going to cut down to the sh shuttle bay. Uh, let's see where the shrine is there. Erkin is there. And uh, where is Coax? He would be yeah. running. So Yes, he would be. I'm just finding your token, which is here. Okay. You are... So, Coax, you come in to find the uh, bow of the shuttle has been almost welded into... or It has made a shuttle-sized dent in the back wall. Uh, there's already a... Per, uh, one of the shuttle bay attendants has already rushed down with a cutting tool to get uh, Alec out. Um, you realize... Well, actually, roll me insight plus medicine, please. Insight medicine. Medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, difficulty, uh, difficulty of one. Oh, okay. So I'll just mm -hmm. roll that. Um, emergency medicine. This would work. As a focus. Okay, so you get one momentum. Okay, so um, Urkin has suffered a massive head wound, uh, blunt Im blunt impact against a console, and is still attached to his seat at an odd angle, although the seat itself is physically detached. Um, how Thankfully, the uh, shuttle bay attendant is quickly down and cutting him loose, 
as he looks to you and says, I'm no doctor, sir. Um, uh, that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, help help me with him for just a second. Lay him out flat. Well, uh -huh. And I'm going to be taking the medical tricorder and, and just giving him once over and seeing if there's anything that needs to be taken care of immediately. Right. Um, so the restraints of the sh the restraints on the seat have prevented a have prevented significant body injury. Um, thankfully, there is no spinal damage. Uh, it looks like there's just going to be a good sized scar in his uh, on his forehead once this is all said and done. But he is currently unconscious and not seeing much of anything at the moment. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and. Uh... Let's get him uh, transported uh, back to Medical Bay, and uh, okay. hopefully he'll have a scar that impresses the ladies if he wants it. I'm sure he would. So we'll just beam you guys quickly to Sick Bay. Paste. Erkin on Biobed. Coax clone goes away. Okay, and that is so. Um, sadly, Alec, you are unconscious for this scene, which is a bit of a shame, because now we're trusting the uh, ship's safety in Jefferson's hands. Hooray! No! My, my plan oh, has boy. worked all along. <laughs> okay, so we are on the bridge. Um, just as you enter the gateway, rough, you, the chronometer counts down to zero, and the shock, the uh, detonations occur. And someone needs to fly for Jefferson Davis. And might I recommend that someone ele you know, give him a focus or a value or a talent before they roll for Jefferson Davis. Because literally, whatever happens is up to Jefferson Davis. <laughs> give him a... a... <laughs> give him a value. Okay. Failure is not an option. That's a good one. Okay, so by doing so, you've actually given him a point of determination to spend. And he'll burn that determination. Yeah. So this is going to be a daring plus uh, con check. Uh, difficulty of four. And the ship can assist with engines plus con or structure plus con. Yes, I'm doing that. Yes, he, I said that right. Can he, we got momentum that he can use for another die? There are two. Yep. Let's use one of them. Who's got the ship? Oh. oh. Okay, oh. there's uh, th the three successes. Where's the fourth? We'd have to use both focus, or I'm sorry, both momentum because no. we. I'm sorry. The yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually five successes. So, yeah. Pick five. Yep, yep. So yeah, um, you're down to zero momentum. And nothing from the ship. <clears throat> Let's just for funsy see how well the uh, Naginata and Blackhawk do, but they entered first, so it's a lesser difficulty for them. Naginata six will escape unharmed, and Blackhawk will gets caught up in it just at the end, but not suffer any major damage. So, it was such a nice day at Deep Space 15. Nothing was going on, ex except until there is a... If people were, were watching the sensors, they would notice a small disturbance coming through gate number... I believe that would be gate number 22. Not entirely sure the source of it, because they haven't really done much uh, exploring down there yet. However, um, there is a rush of blue um, energy uh, that spits out three uh, Starfleet intelligence vessels. And you guys successfully have made it out with minimal damage, I must say. Well, unfortunately, we still lost some people. Yeah. Other ships, and that still does matter to me. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we we accomplished the mission, and we came we came through. So, we I'm gonna immediately contact the station and contact Commander Dolrim to 
get uh, service facilities, medical facilities up and running to prepare for the casualties that uh, that we have of to course. help assist us. Of course. Um, their officer or their medical officer area will be standing by to assist the wounded. Um, in the post, um, Truel quickly uh, just sends over a quick message in text, says, a fine job uh, overseeing the tactical complexities of this organ of this operation. You, uh, he, uh, you, or he is impressed, and was pleased to serve under you for this operation. Commander Ty okay. would do the same, except she's currently under medical sedation. So, yeah. I acknowledge his gratitude, and I just respond back that I hope that the rest of Starfleet intelligence had a better job than we did. Mm-hmm. <sighs> So, um, f with over, th um, does anybody have any immediate scenes they wish to have? Um, because I have one I wish to do with Urkin real quick. Um, also, um, this I should have asked this of you a little while ago, Urkin. Uh, I know you said you figured it out; it's in your backstory, but your backstory wasn't sent to me, so I'm going to have to ask. Um, orb experience. Which orb was it? Or oh, was ah, uh, oh, I know I told you, and then I probably didn't even write it down. Okay. Terrible there. That's okay. Um, uh, orb of bravery, I'll say. Orb of bravery. Okay. That's a new. One. That's excellent, because that actually works out well. Um, so Urkin, mm -hmm. it is. You find yourself. One second here. Just preparing things. So, you uh, find yourself in a place of utter white. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Ca Captain Singral walks out from the shadows, or walks out, uh, dis appearing as a distinct um, black shadow for the longest time. And what must feel for you know, an hour or so. The captain shows up. And the captain speaks. The wayfarer has a, has arrived. This is good. And all of a sudden, behind you, uh, the Shran appears. The wayfarer will set things right in this area. And, um, let's see, where is it? I could have sworn I had him. I don't know where I put him. Oh, well. And f th the third individual just sort of winks out of, ex or winks into existence. The Wayfarer will ensure stability in this area. And the fourth, Mr. Helsing says... The Wayfarer will wake the Guardian. Wait, the Guardian? The Wayfarer? And at that Am point, I the Wayfarer? And at that point, you regain consciousness in sickbay. Ah, I'll shoot upright. Well, I have good news and I have bad news for you. Uh, the good news the is... Oh, you want the bad news first? Okay. Sure, I'll, take the bad, that... I'll take the bad news first. Bad news is you're more attractive to the ladies. You have a small scar on your forehead. You'll be all right, though. All right. The, the good news is you didn't die. <clears throat> did, did we die? No. I'm kidding. That that was a joke. I'm. It's my bedside manner. I'm being funny. You're perfectly fine. You had a little uh, accident coming into the shuttle bay. But the bomb didn't go off. Like, the, the nuke didn't go off. This isn't the afterlife. Okay, sorry, Doctor. I, I, I oh. wish I could understand. Yeah, he'll walk over. I th maybe you're not doing as well as I thought you were. Uh, dissolution. You're you seem to be having a problem, and I'll I'll take a medical tricorder and start scanning just for any any more uh, <laughs> concussion. <laughs> a second scan, because now I'm I'm doubting my professional opinion. No, no, doctor. I think you, you you did a great job. I I feel perfectly reasonable. I'm I'm intact. Um, but I had 
what uh, what old humans used to call an out of body experience in which i i believe the prophet spoke to me so oh could, what did they say something about a wayfarer and waking a guardian i must i must seek counsel on this uh oh uh well um let me put this band on just to make sure that you don't have a uh, standing concussion. Um, you're you're free to go. Other than that, I've patched you up. You are nothing short of a wizard and a good trusted friend. And, uh, and he'll slowly and shakily leave the sick bay, heading towards his quarters. Okay. Okay. So, and at that point, I'm. That's the plot I've run, so um, does anybody wish to have anything, any wrap-ups they'd like to do? Well, I'm not hearing anyone clamoring for it, so at this point I'd like to say thanks for everyone. Um, uh, this is the season finale of Nighthawk. Uh, we will be resuming in um, not next, not the 26th, but instead we will be back on October the 10th. Um, I'm glad that it sounds like a, all the players had fun. I'm sure I had fun. So players, stick around. We'll talk about what comes next. And for everyone who is watching, either on stream or on YouTube, thanks all for listening, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!